Yeah, he's in the bottom of the Okay, we live now. Okay. Good morning. I'd like to call the meeting to order. And um, this is our last meeting of, of this term of uh, council. And I'd like to thank everyone for all your help over the last four years. It's been great. And I just have a statement to read here. Today's meeting is being live streamed and recorded on the Township of Muskoka Lakes website and YouTube channel. By participating in the open public meeting today, you are consenting to your image, voice, and comments being recorded and posted online. Thank you. And we have the adoption of the minutes. Moved by Member Quinn, second by Member Bosnamworth, be it resolved that Committee of Adjustment agenda dated November 7th, 2022 be adopted. All those in favor? That's carried. Are there any declarations of uh, interest? Yes, Member Creaser. I have a declaration of uh, interest in uh, B2922 Olson. Okay. So noted. And Moved by Member Grogan Green, second by Member Creaser, be it resolved that the minutes dated October the 11th, 2022, be adopted and approved as circulated. Any questions or comments? All those in favor. That's carried. Okay, and now we'll have the secretary uh, treasurer read the outline, the uh, procedures. Thank you, Kitty. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Oh. It's required that I make a few statements and then I'll explain the procedures of the hearing. This electronic hearing is being held in accordance with section 238 of the Municipal Act 2001 due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The members of the Committee of Adjustment present are the Chair, Alan Edwards, members Joe Quinn, Lisa Grogan-Green, Robert Bosomworth, and Sharon Creaser. I confirm we have a quorum. I can also confirm that senior staff and planning staff are present. Public input on this November 7th, 2022 agenda was invited at the following email address, planning at muskokalakes.ca. It should be noted that the motions have been pre-populated with random movers and seconders to expedite the meeting. When it is time to vote, members shall physically raise their hand until the chair has confirmed the vote. If the vote is unclear, a verbal vote shall be recorded. This is not considered a recorded vote. Now I will explain the hearing process. The planner will provide an explanation and purpose of the application, the date this was circulated and planning staff's comments. All internal and external submissions were sent to committee members on Friday, November 4th, 2022. The planner will also present any submissions received after this date. The committee will then hear from the applicant or the applicant's agent if they wish to add any information or to substantiate their proposal. Please provide your name, mailing address, and postal code for our records. The committee will hear from those in support of the application, 
and those in opposition to the application. Again, please provide your name, mailing address, and postal code for our records. If you are here to speak on an application, please wait to raise your hand in Zoom until the planner presents the relevant application. The committee will then hear from the applicant or the agent, applicant's agent to respond to any questions or concerns raised. The committee will then have the opportunity to ask questions of the applicant and or staff. The committee will debate the application and make a decision based on the information presented at this hearing. Please note that the effect of written and oral submissions on decisions of applications for consent and minor variances and the reasons for the minor variance decisions as both are required under the Planning Act will be pre-populated with standard wording. However, the committee may decide to add reasons and or effects to the standard word, wording after voting on a decision. It must be noted that the chair has a vote on each application and can participate in the discussion. Additionally, there is a 20 day appeal period from the date of the decision. If the case, in the case of a minor variance application, a building permit is not available until after the appeal period and no appeals are received. When you present at the hearing, please provide us your name and mailing address. Presentations are limited to five minutes unless otherwise permitted by the committee. Please note the resolutions are automatically written in the positive to assist in completing this decisions as opposed to writing out each resolution. This does not in any way mean an application is going to be approved. And lastly, please take down the pink notice signs that were posted on your property to advertise today's meeting. That's it, thank you. Thank you very much, Kitty. And our first application is B3334.22 ML, as well as A7322. And that is Ms. Walker. Good morning, Chair Edwards and members of committee. Uh, the first application to be heard is consent application B-33-34-22 ML and minor variance application A-73-22 and the name of Griffith, Griffith and Rosso Leisure Incorporated. The subject property is known municipally as 1140 Mornis Road, Units 3 and Unit 5. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted consent sketches starting on page 41 of the agenda package. A severance application has has been made to undertake two lot additions. Consent application B slash 33 slash 22 ML proposes to sever a portion of the Griffith property and add it to the abutting Rosso Leisure property. The lands contain an existing patio and hot tub. Severance application B slash 34 slash 22 ML proposes to sever a portion of the Rosso Leisure property and add it to the abutting Griffith property. The proposed severances are a change in common lot lines only. Minor variance application A-73-22 proposes to recognize the resultant interior side yard setback of the hot tub on the resultant lot at 1140 Mornis Road, Unit 3. The required setback is 15 feet. The proposed setback is zero feet. The requested variance is therefore 15 feet. Notice of this public hearing was circulated 14 days in advance of today's meeting in accordance with the Planning Act and three comments have been received. Comments have been received from Nick um, Nick Snyder, Township's Chief Building Official, Tim Sopko, the Township's Public Works Technician, and Sandy Boss, the Township Septic Inspector. These comments were circulated to committee prior to today's meeting and can be read in full at the request of committee. Staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration and have no objection to application B-33-34-22 ML. If committee is considering approval, staff recommend the following conditions. First, the registral description of the severed lots and any required rights of ways be submitted to the secretary treasurer along with a res registered copy of the reference plan. That a legal undertaking be submitted in order to confirm that the severed lots will merge on title to the lots there being added to upon registration of the transfer slash deeds, which may include the requirement to cancel consent granted in B slash 33 slash 14 ML Bassett. The application B slash 33 slash 22 ML 
ML ribbon be finalized prior to application B slash 34 slash 22 ML Rosso Leisure. That confirmation be received that the township is satisfied that any problems identified with existing sewage systems on resultant lots be corrected to the satisfaction of the township. That the lot coverage within 200 feet of the high water mark on resultant lot two, the Rosso Leisure property, be brought into compliance with the township's zoning bylaw. That the shoreline structures on the resultant lot two, the Rosso Leisure Incorporated property, be brought into compliance with the township zoning bylaw. And that minor variance application A 73 22 be approved. Staff have recommended that minor variance application A 73 22 Rosso Leisure Incorporated be approved. I have no further comments, but I'm happy to assist with any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Walker. Is the uh, applicant or applicant's agent here wish to speak on this? I'm here, Mr. Edwards. Okay, would you like to say anything, Mr. Edwards? Uh, thank you. Um, good morning, committee. Uh, my name is Ryan Allen. 104 Kimberly Ave, Bracebridge, Ontario, P1L1Z8. And I'm here today representing uh, the applicants of the severance and the variance. Uh, thanks, Ms. Walker, for your detailed and thorough uh, report, as well as the description of the applications. Just to quickly summarize, the severance applications involving unit number three and unit number five on 1140 Moranus Road are transferring approximately 196 square feet from one lot and then transferring 196 square feet to the other lot. No change in lot area or frontage is proposed. And the land swaps are particularly to deal with a title insurance claim that is being processed through FT FTC insurance on Barbara Griffith's lot. And the intention is to adjust the side lot lines so this patio and hot tub are wholly contained on the Rosso uh, Leisure lot, which is held in the ownership of Richard Washburg. The lots will continue to comply with the WR5 zone requirements. The variance proposed for the setback from the new lot line for the hot tub and patio is uh, the setback on, on the plan provided is one foot. The intention was to keep the lot additions as absolutely as small as possible. I understand that both owners have no concerns with the proposed uh, one foot setback. I would also note that the survey uh, revealed a boat lifts dock and a boat canopy that uh, collectively exceed the cumulative dock width and lot coverage. And I'm agreeable or we're agreeable through conditions to clean that up. Um, and those will be addressed uh, by either removal um, which is the likely uh, expectation. I would also note that the hot tub is more than 50 feet from the shoreline. Uh, so hopefully this is a relatively straightforward application and I have um, available to answer any questions if you have. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Allen. Is there anyone else here wishing to speak in support? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition? Other questions from the members? Yes, Mr. Member Bosomworth. Uh, I have concern that about only a one foot setback on a hot tub, uh, it just seems that um, it'd be pretty hard not to trespass. And I think uh, have staff has suggested that it might be a good idea to increase that. And we could do that quite easily. Uh, the current uh, owners might be completely compatible, but you never know what might happen in the future. Mr. Allen. Thank you, through Chair Edwards. Um, when FTC Insurance first approached uh, Planscape um, to consider this, this application, um, John Hiley had prepared the severance plan that included the two land swaps. And it's my understanding that uh, the both neighbors were fully agreeable with the proposed lot configuration. So we proceeded on that basis. Okay, thank you. Does anyone else have any uh, questions or comments on this? Uh, yes, Member Bosenworth. Uh, just a question. I noticed that the uh, from the drawing, I was wondering. Uh, it's a, it's only related to the lot coverage, but also the uh, the uh, total width of of the uh, shoreline structures. I was just wondering if that exceeds seventy five feet or not, Mr. Allen. Uh, thank you, through you, uh, Chair Edwards. 
the the resultant effect of the shoreline structures, the canopy, the dock, the boat lifts, uh, they do not comply with the minimum side yard setback. They exceed the maximum cumulative dock and first story boathouse width, and also slightly exceed the maximum 10% coverage. So I, I'm agreeable with including a condition as part of the severance application that those structures be brought into conformity with the uh, zoning bylaw requirements. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Seeing as 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 both parties are uh, are agreeable to the the setback, I don't think we have to bring anything else like that in. But I'll ask: Would anybody else like to to see that setback increased? Yes, Member Green. I I. So we can't hear you. So Lisa, we can't hear you. Um, I just want clarity, please, from from Ryan as to what he's talking about exactly. What 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 is he saying? I didn't understand that. No, what what was asked? I had asked is the setback. There's a one foot setback. Uh, Member Bosworth asked for a larger one, but as I said, both both parties are in in agreement that a one foot setback. So I don't have a problem with it. I ask if anybody else had a problem with it. Member Creaser. Uh, I don't have a problem with the setback, but I, I like what Ryan was saying about the added condition for addressing the overage on uh, shoreline yep. structures. Okay, I'll, what I'll do is I'll, I'll read the, the motion we can add if we have, okay? Thank you. Okay. Moved by member Crogan Green, second by member Quinn, be it resolved that consent be granted for application B3322 ML and B3422 ML, Griffith and Rosso Leisure Inc. Provided the following conditions are fulfilled. One, a registrable description deed of the separate lot and any required right of way be submitted to the secretary treasurer along with the registered copy of the reference plan. Two, that a legal undertaking be submitted in order to confirm that the separate lot will merge in title to the lots that are being added to upon registration of the transfer slash D, which may include a requirement to cancel consent granted B3314 ML Bassett. And three, the, the applicant B 3322 ML Griffiths be finalized prior to the application B 3422 ML Fossil Leisure Inc. And four, the confirmation be re received that the township is satisfied that the problems identified with the existing sewer system on the resulting loss be corrected to the satisfaction of the township. And four, that a lot coverage within 200 feet of the high water mark of the resulting lot to Russell Leisure Inc. be brought into compliance with the township zoning bylaw. And six, that the shoreline structures on the resultant lot to Russell Leisure Inc. be brought into compliance with the township zoning bylaw. And seven, that a minor variance, A7322 Russell Leisure Inc. be approved. And so it looks like everything is is addressed in in the uh, in the thing. Are there any uh, questions or comments? All those in favor? That is carried. Thank you, committee. Have a great morning. I'm just just getting to that. <laughs> I just saw the thank you. And with the with the minor variance, moved by Member Bosworth, second by Member Grogan Green, be it resolved that application A seventy three twenty two Russell Russell sorry Leisure Inc. to recognize resultant interior 
site yard setback of a hot tub is hereby approved with the following variance being granted to me. One, to permit a hot tub to be set back zero feet from the interior side lot line resulting from application B 3322 ML. This variance is granted as shown on the plan attached to the notice of decision. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Any questions or comments? All those in favor. Thank you. And that is carried. Okay. Next application is B2922 ML Olson. And that is uh, Ms. Crowder. Uh, excuse uh, me, Mr. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Chair. Can okay. I can I ask Member Creaser to and she has turned off her to confirm her conflict, the nature of the conflict? It's just personal. I've had the benefit of a generous owner who has allowed me and many other people access to his property, walking, snowshoeing, skiing. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Chair Edwards. The next application to be heard is consent application B2922 in the name of Olson. Subject lands are known municipally as 1156 Skeleton Lake Road 5. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted consent sketch on page 66 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is as follows, to create one additional residential lot with frontage on Skeleton Lake Road 5. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 15 days in advance of this meeting and three submissions have been received to date. Comments have been received from Tim Sopko, the Township's Public Works Technician, recommending that approval of the severance be subject to confirmation from the Township's Public Works Department for the availability of an entrance permit for the severed lot. Comments have been received from Nick Snyder, the Township's Chief Building Official, stating that they have no objection to the application. And comments have also been received from Sandy Boss, the township septic inspector, stating that both the severed and retained lots have area for replacement sewage disposal systems. Staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration and have recommended that the application be approved subject to the following conditions. That a registrable description of the severed lot and any required right of way be submitted to the secretary treasurer along with a registered copy of the reference plan that confirmation be received that the township is satisfied that the severed lot is satisfactory for on-site sewage disposal and that any problems identified with any existing sewage system on the retained lot be corrected to the satisfaction of the township, that the availability of an entrance permit be confirmed by the township's public works department for the severed lot if required, and that cash in lieu of parkland be dedicated to the township in the amount of 5% of the assessed value of the newly created vacant lot or the entire lands, whichever is less. Staff have no further comments at this time and are happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you. I know you're speaking Chair Edwards, but I couldn't hear you. Anyways. Sorry, sorry. That's, that's, that's fine, Mr. Pony, let me go ahead. Good morning. Good morning, Chair Edwards and members of committee. Stephen Fauner, 109 uh, Meadow Heights Drive, Bracebridge, Ontario, P1L1A4. And I'm with uh, Northern Vision Planning Limited. And I'm here representing uh, Ed Olson, who is the uh, owner of the uh, property. First, I'd like to thank uh, staff for their positive report. Uh, Emily's report was excellent. And uh, I would also note that uh, we have no objection to the uh, proposed uh, conditions. Uh, I do have a PowerPoint presentation, which I'll uh, go through uh, quickly, and uh, I'm here to answer any questions after that. Thank you, and go to next uh, next slide. Oh. 
Sorry. Thank you. Uh, the uh, property uh, in its entirety is uh, quite a large uh, piece of property. It's uh, almost 50 acres and has uh, considerable uh, frontage. This frontage here that I've noted is a straight line frontage because of the curvature of the road. When you're creating the two lots, you actually uh, increase the frontage a bit. Next. And I would also note too, just before getting into this diagram, that it's the intent of the uh, severed lot. It's going to remain in uh, Ed Olson's name for some time and will probably be transferred to uh, one of the children uh, later on down the road. This is the uh, overall lot configuration and uh, the area of Skeleton Lake Road 5. Next. And uh, this just zooms in a bit. Uh, so we had originally considered a uh, lot line that went east-west, but uh, we wanted to, uh, Mr. Olson wanted more with the retained lot. So then we came up with a north-south uh, type boundary. And uh, this actually works uh, quite well given the situation uh, on the ground. So we certainly meet the requirements of 660 feet of frontage and five acres for the zoning and the official plan. Next. And this shows the uh, buildings on the property. I would note on the southerly portion, the proposed severed lot, uh, the label there, blacksmith shop, you'll see in the photos, it's actually a sort of an open storage building. The old blacksmith shop, which is used now for storage is actually immediately behind or to the north of this building. And I've, I've got a photo of that. Uh, please also note there's a pond on the property that's uh, entirely on the uh, severed lot. And you can see that the property does rise up to the south, but uh, otherwise is a fairly level property. Next. And this is um, uh, just looking in from the uh, from Scout Lake Road 5 into the entrance on the retained lot. Next. And this is just taken farther down the driveway with the uh, dwelling being the green roofed building and uh, the accessory building straight ahead. Staff had some excellent photos of the uh, accessory building, so I don't need to go through those. Next. Uh, a good portion of the retained lot is actually a red pine plantation. And this obviously shows, um, you know, this is sort of in the midpoint of the proposed uh, retained lot taken from the road. Next. And this is at the uh, south end of the retained lot. And if you were to follow that line of birch trees, the proposed lot line is going to sort of extend that and go right straight through as you see in this uh, photograph and you'll see the road that uh, bends off to the right. Next. And right near that, uh, the boundary between the two, this is actually a, a road leading into Camp Quassand and that's a private road and has crossed uh, the Olson lands for many, many years. Next. On the proposed several lot, this is an entrance. Uh, I understand this has been here for many, many years. Uh, there, this is the uh, site of the old homestead that used to be on the property. Next. And this is just a little further in the laneway. You can see how it's cleared. You can see in the middle of the photograph, there's actually a, a well, a concrete well you can see there. A uh, number of small buildings, but again, it's it's mostly open on the right. There's actually, uh, I believe those are apple trees that are there. Um, and that's where future construction would take place. Next. And this is just a little further in. I would also note too, as noted in Mr. Boss's report, there's a septic system that actually has been installed. It's actually behind that uh, small little outbuilding there. Uh, and it was, um, uh, permitted in 2021 and installed. So there's actually a new septic system on the property. Next. And this is that open storage building I mentioned, obviously used for canoes uh, at this particular time. And that's the blacksmith building in, uh, in the back of that. Next. And just a close up of the old blacksmith building. Next. And this is the pond that's also on the proposed severed lot. Next. So in terms of planning analysis, we know the PPS permits limited uh, residential development on rural lands. Next. And back lots are permitted in both official plans. And I mentioned the lot size, which we do meet and we do front onto a year round publicly maintained road. And the OP policies are implemented by the WR2 zone, which we do comply with. Next. 
And there's certainly suitability for development on uh, the proposed severed lot. Uh, the retained lot has existing development and no changes are proposed. And I mentioned the septic permit's been issued on the severed lot. Next. Neighboring properties, I just want to show that this is a, a waterfront back lot. This is uh, near the entrance to the retained lot. Next. And one other cottage property as well. Next. And this is near the entrance with the um, severed property. So it, and you can see the lake in the background. So th this clearly is a back lot. Next. And my conclusions are here and uh, to save repeating, I, I won't go through them, but um, I think it's uh, quite a reasonable application. Uh, meets all the test of the official plan and the PPS. And I'm here to answer any questions. Thank you. Are there any questions from the members? No. Uh, just one, you say it's going to stay in the same ownership, Mr. Fawner, um, and that it, uh, it will be set up so it, it, that doesn't merge them. Right? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, correct. As, you, as you know, under the Planning Act now, as of March 1979, once a consent, always a consent. So uh, it can actually remain in the same names and they won't merge. Okay, thank you. Just to me, just want to clarify. Is there anyone else here wishing to speak in support of this application? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition to this application? Are there any uh, questions or comments from the members? Okay. Moved by Member Grogan Green, second by Member Quinn, be it resolved that consent be granted for application B2922 ML Olson providing the following conditions are fulfilled. One, a registrable description deed of the separate lot and any required right of way be submitted to the secretary treasurer along with a registered copy of the reference plan. Two, the confirmation be received that the township is satisfied that the separate lot is satisfactory on-site sewage disposal that any problems identified with any existing sewage system on the retained lot be corrected to the satisfaction of the township. Three, that the availability of an entrance permit be confirmed with the Township Public Works Department for the separate lot if required. And four, that cash in lieu of parkland be dedicated to the township the amount of 5% of the assessed value of the newly created vacant lot or the entire lands, whichever is less. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? And that is carried. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. Okay. And the next application is A4822 Markham. And that is Ms. Walker. Go ahead. Thank you, Chair Edwards. The next application to be heard is minor variance application A-48-22 in the name of Markham. The subject property is known municipally as 1158 Greenwood Point Road, Unit 6. I would recommend committee, um, I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plan starting on page 84 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is summarized as follows. The applicants propose to construct a two-story garage with a sleeping cabin on the second floor. Relief is requested from section 3.4.1 of bylaw 2014-14 being the minimum lot frontage requirement of 100 feet. The subject property has a 97 feet of lot frontage. The variance being requested is three feet. If approved, this variance will not deem the lot a building lot. Relief is also requested from section 4.1.3.6 and 4.1.3.7 of bylaw 2014-14 being the maximum coverage of buildings within 200 feet from the high water mark. The maximum permitted coverage is 10%. The proposed coverage is to be 11% and the requested variance is 1%. Notice of this public hearing was circulated 10 days in advance of today's meeting in accordance with the Planning Act and four comments have been received. Comments have been received from Tim Selfco, the Township's Public Works Technician, Nick Snyder, the Township's Chief Building Official. Letters of support were also received by Hillary Cole slash Tilly and Alex Tilly, neighboring property owners to the west, and Robert Staffen and Sharon Staffen, neighboring property owners to the east. These comments were all circulated to committee prior to today's meeting and can be read in full at the request of committee. 
Staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration and have no objections. If committee is considering approval, staff recommend the following condition. That a satisfactory site plan agreement be entered into along with securities for the retention and revegetation of the shoreline buffer, plantings in front of the proposed garage and sleeping cabin and the installation of sediment fencing. Staff have no further comments at this time, but I'm happy to thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Walker. Is the applicant or applicant's agent here wishing to speak on this? No one? Nobody in support? Or nobody in opposition? Okay, well, um, I'll, I'll read this and then we can go to questions and, or comments. Moved by member Groken Green, second by member Creaser, be it resolved that application A4822 Markham to permit the construction of a two story garage with a sleeping cabin on the second floor on an undersized lot is hereby approved with the following variance being granted. <coughs> Excuse me. One, to permit a new two story garage with a sleeping cabin on the second floor on a lot with 97 feet of lot frontage and two, permit a lot coverage of 2,243 square feet or 11% within 200 feet of the high water mark. This variance, these variances are granted as shown on a plan attached to the notice of decision and are subject to the following condition. One, that a satisfactory site plan agreement be entered into along with securities for the retention and revegetation of the shoreline buffer plantings in front of the proposed garage sleeping cabin and insulation of sediment fence. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Are there any questions or comments? All those in favor? That is carried. Okay, the next one is A5722 Park, and that is Mr. Sawyer. Thank you, Chair Edwards. Good morning, members of the committee, members of the public. The next application to be heard is minor variance application A5722 in the name of Clark. The subject property is known as 1444 Peninsula Road. And I would direct committee's attention to the submitted sketches starting on page 107 of today's agenda package. The purpose and effect of this application is summarized as follows. The applicant proposed to reconstruct three existing legal non-complying accommodation units. One of the units is to be constructed in a new location with a garage in the lower level. The other two are to be reconstructed within their uh, existing footprint. However, one of these is to have a rooftop sun deck instead of the existing peaked roof. The proposed redevelopment also involves the addition of a storage loft within the existing garage building. This intended increase in height complies with zoning requirements. Relief is requested from the maximum permitted lot coverage amount. In the waterfront commercial WC1 zone, the maximum lot coverage amount is 10%. In this case, the existing buildings and structures have a lot coverage of 10.9%. Um, although the proposed lot coverage is also 10.9%, the redevelopment involves a redistribution of lot coverage due to the change in location of one of the accommodation units and a variance of 0.9% over what is permitted is therefore requested. A relief is also requested from the minimum interior side yard setback of 30 feet for a sun deck. The sun deck that is proposed on the roof of the accommodation unit, um, this, uh, the, the unit identified as cabin three, is to be 13.5 feet from the northerly interior side lot line, and therefore a variance of 16.5 feet is requested. A notice of this public hearing was circulated 10 days in advance of today's meeting in accordance with the Planning Act, and four submissions have been received. Uh, and these uh, comments were forwarded, forwarded to committee prior to today's meeting. The Development Services Division and Public Works Department have advised that they have no concerns. Um, 
Public Works Department also advised that the district in Muskoka should be consulted regarding the subject property's two existing entrances onto Peninsula Road, as this road is under the jurisdiction of the district of Muskoka. Uh, planning staff have therefore reached out to district staff who have confirmed they have no concerned concerns with the existing entrances. And a submission was received from Hillary um, Abel, the owner of the abutting property to the Northwest, which states that she is aware of the reconstruction of the three accommodation units as and is in support. A submission was also received in opposition from Eric Percival, one of the owners of the abutting property to the Southeast. Uh, in summary, the letter states that the objection is um, due to concerns related to uh, an, an insufficient notice period, uh, concerns with potential additional commercial use of the property and potential negative impacts on neighboring properties, concerns with the property being advertised as a short-term rental. And the letter also expresses concerns that the storage space proposed above the existing garage could be converted um, to additional living space. I've prepared a detailed staff report for committee's consideration and staff have recommended approval. No further comments at this time, but I would be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Soya. Is there anyone else here wishing to speak in support of this application? Or the agent, okay. Thank you. Hello, thank you, uh, Chair and Committee members. My name is April Best Serreras. I'm agent on behalf of the owners. I'm here from Marie Poy Planning and Associates. We're located at 44 King William Street, Unit A in Huntsville, Ontario, P1H1G3. So thank you committee for taking the time to hear this application today and for allowing us the opportunity to provide our professional opinion on this application. I would like to thank Mr. Soya for your presentation and staff's recommendation for approval. I concur with Mr. Soya's explanation and recommendation. So I'll just keep my presentation short and sweet and not reiterate too much of what Mr. Soya has already explained. So the application before committee today proposes to reconstruct three existing cabins on the property. So cabin number one is the cabin closest to the side lot line on the road. It is proposed to be relocated farther from the side lot line than the existing cabin. So it actually complies with the minimum required side yard setback being a net improvement over the existing situation. No change in floor area is proposed with the reconstructed cabin with garage below and the proposed height complies with the bylaw. As indicated by staff, relief is required for cabin number one to be reconstructed in a different location on the property as the property has a legal non-complying lot coverage of 10.9%. Just to reiterate, no increase in lot coverage is proposed as part of the subject application. Again, no additional footprint uh, and no further relief is required to reconstruct uh, cabin number one. Cabin number two um, being next to, uh, to cabin number one near the road, it is proposed to be reconstructed with an open and unenclosed deck in the same location as the existing cabin with the same floor area and height. No relief is required from the township zoning bylaw for this reconstruction. Uh, cabin number three is proposed to be reconstructed in the same location with the same floor area as the existing cabin. An open and unenclosed sun deck is proposed on the upper floor, whereby the height of the proposed cabin will actually be less than the height of the existing cabin. So it'd be a decrease from approximately 14.5 feet existing to 13.2 feet proposed. As indicated by staff, relief is required for cabin number three to be reconstructed with a sun deck above at an existing side yard setback of 13.9 feet. Again, no, uh, no additional relief is required as it is not going any closer to the side lot line than existing. Uh, so overall, as indicated by staff, a significant number of conifer plantings were previously required in the front yard area through the existing site plan agreement, which currently exists and will continue to mature to provide sufficient buffering of built form when viewed from the lake. There are also existing mature trees throughout the property to prevent the proposed reconstructed cabins from having a significant visual impact. All the cabins exceed the minimum required shoreline and rear yard setbacks. And as cabin number one is proposed to be relocated farther from the side lot line and neighboring property, the proposed reconstruction will have an even lesser impact on the adjacent property. It is important to note that a driveway to the neighboring property is directly adjacent to the side lot line where the cabins are located. And as indicated by Mr. Soya, a letter of support from the, uh, the neighboring property owner was received for the proposed reconstruction of these cabins. Overall, is our opinion that the proposed reconstruction of three existing legal non-compliant cabins on the property satisfies the tests for a minor variance application as outlined in the Planning Act. We kindly request that committee support staff's recommendation for approval. And I'm here and happy to answer any questions you may have. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, is there anyone else who wishes to be in support? Anyone in opposition? Okay, are there questions from the members? Yes, Member Green. Am I unmuted or what? Yeah, you're happen? okay now. Um, I have concerns with this property because of the fact that it's basically operated as a private residence for so many years. And I think the planner said that she represents the owner. And I just want clarity as to who the real owner is and what the plan is. Because while it's wonderful that certain things are coming into better compliance, the fact is that the cottage itself could be, you know, put out on Airbnb for $75,000 a week. And who knows what the other cabins would do based on the other members or the other, uh, the letter of opposition we received, it sounds like, you know, some of this thing, some of it is already being advertised as a rental. And I have a concern where a property may have been sold and even priced based on future income rental. Uh, and yet the property itself for, you know, quite a number of years, almost, I guess, I don't know, two decades, has actually been run as a private residence, yet the owner is entitled to sell it as a resort commercial property. I think that's wrong. And I actually think that, you know, when these things get, when something uh, that is resort commercial becomes a private residence, it should be down zoned and or the owner of any resort commercial property should produce a contribution agreement whereby they promise that they will indeed collect rent off of this thing and operate it as it as it should be operated. I don't think that you should have a right to essentially, you know, treat a property like it's been down zoned and then sell it as if it hasn't been down zoned. So I, I really have a problem with this. I don't think it's minor. I think it's something that should go to the planning committee and have a fuller discussion about the uh, implications of this. That, that's that's my opinion. I, I I read Eric Percival's letter. I've actually driven by that property for 50 years and I've driven in there and uh, handed out flyers four years ago at the last election. And I saw what I felt was a residential property. And I don't, you know, I'd like proof some kind of affidavit and proof that this property has been run as a resort commercial property and rents have been received when those cabins were rented out. That's all I have to say. Uh, yes, Member Bosomworth. Chair, I understand. Oh, you're yeah. muted. Yeah, I understand. I understand that the new official plan, if I remember correctly, uh, has the opportunity to downzone uh, commercial properties to residential. Is that correct? I'll let the planning staff answer that one. I will not uh, answer that in case I'm wrong. Yeah, there's that, 200, but, uh, almost 300 is. pages in the new official plan, and it'd be hard to remember it all. That's right. Thank you. Just one second. Thank you, Chair Edwards, and uh, thank you for your question, Member Bosomworth. Um, I can confirm that it is my understanding that that is correct, that the new official plan um, does open the door to potential down zoning. I would look to Mr. Pink uh, if committee wants the specific details of exactly you know, what the related policies would look like. I would look to him to provide um, some added uh, clarity, but I would note that this particular application um, was submitted um, before uh, the new official plan was adopted by the Township's Council and it's being reviewed against um, the current policies that are in place. Thank you. Thank you very much. Does that answer that question, Mr. Member Bosomworth? And it is right now, it is, uh, I believe, uh, commercial. It's zoned for that, that no one's ever asked for, for down zoning that I'm aware of. Yes, sir, okay. in that supplement, could you just one second, uh, Mr. Yep. Penn? Is, is, is Mr. Pink going to comment or not? 
Uh, I'm fine. Yeah, yeah, okay, go ahead, David. Uh, good morning, committee. Uh, yes, I can just confirm that under the current official plan policies, uh, they quite strongly discourage or actually prohibit downzoning of resorts. We actually currently define uh, waterfront commercial resort properties as employment lands mm -hmm. in the township, which would mean a uh, downzoning needs to go through a comprehensive review, which is quite a uh, lengthy involved exercise. Uh, what I can uh, inform council is Mr. Sharp uh, has confirmed the new, uh, newly adopted official plan does uh, open the door to consideration uh, of downzoning of properties. And I think that'll be an interesting discussion with the uh, District of Muskoka when they consider approval of uh, the official plan. So I wouldn't say that's uh, set in stone just yet. Uh, what I can confirm is I believe this property went through a minor variance process, I believe several um, years ago, and similar concerns or issues are raised as to uh, its commerciality. And one of the difficult parts with these smaller uh, sort of mom and pop type operations, it's very difficult to, to force the operation of the resort. Um, so there is some challenges there by the municipality. Uh, however, the same concerns are raised and I believe uh, some documentation was submitted at the time by the owner verifying that uh, the property is in fact rented out uh, and provided some details to that effect, uh, website, et cetera. I don't know if uh, the current committee wishes to receive similar type details uh, from the applicant prior to further consideration uh, of the application. But what I would note is uh, at least the redevelopment of the three cabins would presumably uh, open the door to uh, use the property in compliance with the zoning bylaw should it not be currently um, by, uh, again, refurbishing those cabins so that they are available for rental and as a, as a commercial use. So hope that uh, provides some assistance and available to answer any other questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Pink. Uh, supplementary, yes, Mr. Bosworth. Uh, well, thank you, Mr. Pink, for your very good description. I think it's quite clear uh, our current situation. I do have a second point, if I may raise that, Chair. Yes, you may, and then we'll move on. Um, so the uh, the space above the um, above the garage, um, the, its its design appearance certainly makes it looks like a very fancy piece of storage space. And I think we should put the condition on, uh, there's a way that we have, have recently been putting conditions on that space to ensure that uh, it is registered and known to current and future owners that that is storage space only, uh, just to be consistent. I think we should do that. Okay, thank you. And then Mr. Uh, Member Quinn. A question to um, through the chair to uh, David or Bryce: If if down if this potential down zoning of a property would that be something that would be brought forward potentially by the township, or would that have to be an application that it had would have to be made by the owner of the property? Mr. Vink. Uh, thank you. Uh, and through you, I would note that uh, it would typically be made by the property owner. An application would be submitted uh, for our review. And just note, uh, obviously, to be very clear, there's no downzoning application currently before the municipality. This is a minor variance to permit uh, reconstruction of a cabin, uh, which really actually improves the side during setback. It's a it's more of a technicality that lot coverage is increased and the property is being reconfigured. But uh, Yes, that's a, an application that uh, the owner would have to consider uh, and submit to the municipality. Yes, Member Green. So what levers does the township have to ensure that anything with a resort commercial uh, designation is actually run as a resort? I mean, you know, for example, Ross Trevor Resort. Um, I have no idea how that is now now zoned, but I know it's not run as a resort. It's somebody's cottage. So, you know, what's to stop uh, the owner of that property to do the same thing? I just think uh, somehow we got to figure this out. I'm, what what owner would would ask for this? What what owner would ask for a down zoning? I mean, it, the township needs to have its own levers. Uh, I think we're getting a little off topic on this, but uh, Mr. Pink, uh, and I go ahead. 
if an owner has a uh, commercial property and they're paying commercial taxes, even if they're using it for a residence, as long as uh, they're, they haven't downzoned, it's still commercial, is it not? Uh, through you, that's correct. The zoning stays regardless of the property owner's uh, official use. I would say uh, to respond to member Gordon Green's question, um, you might be surprised somewhat. A lot of property owners with smaller resort properties are actually desirous of downzoning over the years, but because of uh, township official plan policies, they really haven't been able to. Uh, the feedback we typically get from these property owners is the economic viability of, of running a resort on such a small property is, is quite challenging. Um, and a lot of times they look for mechanisms to retire or um, keep that use. However, the township looks to hold on to those properties. And that's really the crux of the reason why the new official plan is opening the door, I would say slightly, uh, provided certain checks and balances uh, you know, are addressed, um, that the property really can be uh, downzoned. What I would say for the purposes of the current application, if, if committee feels that the property is not being used for commercial purposes, it would be a, uh, a non-conforming use and a, an expansion would not be permitted. It would be a separate type of application that would be needed. So I think really the test before you is, you know, what type of justification or uh, substantiation do you need from the property owner to verify that the property is actually being used for commercial purposes so that you can consider a, a variance proposal for the reconstruction and perhaps a you know, a deferral for that uh, type of information to be submitted may be, may be prudent, but I see Ms. Uh, April uh, may wish to speak. Okay, I'm going to the letter since uh, it may clarify this. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you. Just just want to reiterate, and, and like uh, Mr. Pink had mentioned, the application that's before committee today is actually improving the existing situation. There's no new development happening. It's reconstructing three of the existing cabins with no changes and, again, no use changes, no four year changes. It's really just improving that side yard setback and then allowing the sun deck on one of the other cabins. So, again, just reiterating, that's all we're here for today is just for the reconstruction of these three cabins to, you know, revive those cabin uses and also improve upon the existing situation. Um, hopefully that kind of clarifies. I know there's a lot of discussion, but um, just want to reiterate that we're here just for those, the reconstruction of those three cabins that are already existing on the property um, and no additional footprint or anything like that. It's only because it is a non-complying property with, uh, you know, 10.9% lot coverage and already deficient side yard setbacks. So um, that's, that's why we're here today. Okay, thank you. Any other uh, questions or comments? I will ask, uh, did, uh, yes, Member Green. Yeah, I think it should be deferred uh, in order for us to re receive proof that this property has been run all these years as a commercial property. Anyone else agree with that? Sorry, M Member Wasenbooth? Chair, I, I find we're kind of in a in a hard place on this one, um, and I, I, I'm not so it's not completely clear to me about how important its current use is with respect to this approval. If it is currently being used for only residential, then I I don't know if there's anything. Is there something we should do? But Mr. Pink has indicated that this question has come up in the past, and there has been proof that it has been used for commercial basis. So I, it, it seems to me that I, I think given the facts at the moment, uh, given the, this position, uh, the timing of this, it's before the, the new OP and the new OP isn't settled because it hasn't gone to the district. I, I don't think we have much uh, leverage here to uh, exercise any of the concerns we have. I think it's pretty straightforward. Okay, thank you. And uh, just one second, uh, member, Quinn. Um, I'm aware of it being rented out um, in the past two years. So I am comfortable that he does rent out the facility. Okay. And did you have your hand up, uh, Member Creaser? No, my questions have been answered. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And one last, uh, and that question, M Member Green. I, I, 
I think it should be deferred. I, I have no idea whether this neighbor was aware that the property has sold. Maybe she is, maybe she is not. I don't know. Um, but I know how I would feel if uh, I was next to a commercial property and uh, a lot of these cabins, I don't think they're moving. I think one is. One of them has a, a, you know, a car park underneath a garage, pretty nice cabin. So I, I don't know. I, that's my opinion. I'm sticking with it. Well, that's fine. And that you're al allowed to have an opinion. Does anyone else think it should, should be deferred at this time? Or, uh, and then the second question is, do you want the, uh, it only storage above the garage? Mm -hmm. And that we can put a condition on, on it. I see uh, Mr. Sharp would like to speak just one second. Thank you, Chair Edwards. I uh, appreciate the opportunity and apologies to interject. I just wanted to, to clarify uh, one point with respect to Member Bosomworth's um, uh, suggestion of a uh, condition requiring a provision in a site plan agreement to restrict the use of the upper level of the, the two-story garage. I believe uh, if that upper level were intended to be used as habitable space, it would uh, constitute um, um, perhaps a, an increase in gross floor area that may contravene the zoning bylaw. Um, I would look to Mr. Uh, to so uh, Mr. Soya to confirm if, if that is in fact the case, but uh, um, the one point that I just wanted to make was with respect to section 41 of the, the Planning Act. Um, Section 41 is intended uh, to control uh, the use of, of buildings through site plan control. Now, with that being said, um, in the past, we have entered into these types of conditions where we have uh, a, an owner or an agent who is willing to, um, to enter into an agreement with the township. Um, at the end of the day, they are entering into an agreement. So I would look to uh, Ms. Bess Serreras to clarify if she would object to that type of, of condition um, before we impose it and perhaps uh, um, create problems for ourselves down the road. Um, so I would, uh, I would perhaps suggest that uh, Ms. Beth Serreras um, clarify her position on that before we, we impose it as a condition. Thank you. Certainly, uh, through you, Mr. Chair. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, I would actually raise the, the point as well as that if it was going to be additional floor area or gross floor area, I do believe, and again, um, Mr. Soya could could um, clarify this, but it would need additional relief under the zoning bylaw if you're going to be adding additional floor area onto the property. Um, so essentially, they'd be limited to to it being entirely a storage uh, loft. But again, if if there's any, if I'm misinterpreting that incorrectly, definitely you know planning staff can can jump in. But my understanding is that they wouldn't be permitted that without coming back before before committee or council. Mr. Soya, all right, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah, it's my understanding that uh, an addition in, uh, in floor area um, would require uh, an additional relief from the bylaw, and, uh, but that the proposed storage use is something that uh, does not require relief and the addition in height, the resulting addition in height does not result in uh, ad additional um, requirement for relief. Um, I believe in this case, um, this uh, proposed redevelopment is happening at the same time as the three cabins and um, the, the applicant has come forward and, and advised that this is also occurring on the property as part of this greater redevelopment of the property, uh, but no relief is required for, um, for that uh, increased storage use. Thank you. Okay. Okay, any more questions or comments? I will read this. Moved by Member Bosomworth, second by Member Grogan Green. Be it resolved that application A5722 Clark to permit the relocation and reconstruction of an accommodation unit, cabin one, and to permit a sun deck on the roof, accommodation cabin three is hereby approved with the following variance being granted. One, to permit a lot coverage of 9,027 square feet or 10.9 and to permit an interior side setback of 13.5 feet from the northerly interior side lot line for cabin three with a sun deck. 
these variances are granted as shown on the plan attached to the notice of decision. Disapproval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Any questions or comments? Yes. So did I hear it from the agent that they would not agree to a site plan agreement restricting the use above the uh, garage to storage? Would you like me to speak to that, Mr. Chair? Yes. Yeah, no, it wasn't that we were disagreeing. It was that um, it really didn't seem necessary given that any additional quarry would need relief from the bylaw. So they wouldn't be permitted, um, as Mr. Soy had reiterated, that they wouldn't be permitted anything other than storage without going through for relief. Um, so it was really just a redundancy that the bylaw already kind of encapsulates the fact that they're not allowed anything other than storage above that garage. Hopefully that clarifies. Okay. Yes, Ms. Member Bosenberg. As we all know, enforcement of that uh, is extremely difficult. And the reason we have asked for these agreements is to in, so that uh, we can increase the enforceability of it. This is a rampant problem around the, the township. Maybe I'm overstating it, but I, it certainly is a significant problem where space gets converted after the final inspection has been done. And uh, this is just a, a mechanism that we have used and cooperative applicants are usually uh, quite happy to give it given their uh, intent to use it as storage only. So I would ask the applicant one more time, would you be happy to enter into that agreement? Through you, Mr. Chair, if committee deems that is as the most appropriate step, um, you know, obviously that, that's what we're here today is, is to have that discussion. But like I said, I just, it's, a, it's essentially a duplication and uh, no relief is required for that storage loft. It's really just being encapsulated in this minor variance because of all of the redevelopment that's happening, um, but it doesn't require any relief for height or anything like that. But if that's what committee wishes, um, you know, obviously that's something that it sounds like the township does, so. Okay, I will ask the the uh, committee. Would you like to see that that uh, included? Yes, yes. Uh, Member Creaser, was that a yes from you as well? Okay. Do you want something that uh, storage unit is only for storage? <laughs> Can you read that if you'd like, Alan? Yeah, I, well, I, I can read it. I'll try and write it. stuck. You can help me out. Okay. 
These variants are granted as shown on a plan attached to the notice of decision and are subject to the following condition. The site plan agreement, SPA 4213, be amended, wherein the owner agrees that the upper level of the garage is to only be used for storage only. Okay. I grant the motion. All those in favor. And that is carried. And there's one against, I believe. And the next application is A6322 Allison, and that is Miss Crowder. Um, I mean, it's not the internet, it's hard when I was home. Oh, wow. Would she lo lose the internet? Yeah, she's lost uh, connection here. Uh-oh. Okay, let's ask for her notes. Oh, no. Can we, uh, can we take a 10-minute comfort break? Yeah, we'll take a 10-minute comfort break, and then we'll get... Uh, our technology hopefully up even if we get her on the phone. Thank you.
And then mute all at the bottom. Okay. So are we ready to come back? Uh, just for, okay, yeah. yeah. A minute. We're having a little bit of problem. I don't know what I, I did wrong, but our our hostess keeps muting me. <laughs> Could we please call the meeting back to order? And uh, the next application is a 6322 Allison, and that is uh, Ms. Crowder, and I believe we hope we have her. Thank you, Chair Edwards. The next application to be heard is minor variance application A6322 in the name of Allison. The subject lands do not have a municipally assigned address. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plan on page 181 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is as follows, to construct a new two-story dwelling. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 11 days in advance of this meeting and two submissions have been received to date. Comments have been received from Tim Sopko, the township's public works technician, stating that public works does not typically support the relaxation of setbacks from public roads or from the unopened road allowance. However, it is recognized that this property has limited options in terms of setbacks and that the application has made an attempt to balance the competing requirements. Public Works would prefer that greater importance be placed on achieving the setback requirement from the road, as opposed to the setback from the unopened road allowance. Comments were received from Nick Snyder, the township's chief building official, stating that the site will require a sewage system be installed and will be evaluated for such upon sewage and building permit applications. Staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration, and have recommended that the application be approved subject to the following conditions. That the availability of an entrance permit be confirmed by the Township's Public Works Department for the subject property if required, and that a site plan agreement be entered into along with securities for retention of vegetation and plantings in the front and side yards. Staff have no further comments at this time and are happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Crowder. And, um... Is the applicant or applicant's agent here wishing to speak on this? Uh, yes, we're, we are. Um, first of all, good morning and thank you, Emily. And thank you, Chief Chair Edwards and the rest of the committee. We're just basically looking, the only reason we're asking for relief is that we have a significant rock face on the property and we do not want to blast. We don't want to do anything to disrupt the integrity of the land. Okay. Is that a bit you like to say? Um, the other point would be that the building being built on the property is our son will be building a small home. And the reason he's doing that, as you know, is housing is, is very costly in Muskoka. And for a young man to get into the housing market, this is the easiest uh, option for him. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Is there anyone else here wishing to speak in support of this application? Anyone in opposition to this application? Okay, are there questions from the members? Okay, good. Moved by member Grogan Green, second by member Creaser, be it resolved that application A6322 Allison to permit the construction of a two story dwelling is hereby approved with the following variances being granted. One, to remit a dwelling to be set back 34 feet from the front lot line. Two, to permit a dwelling to be set back 39 feet from the exterior side lot line. And three, to permit a dwelling to be set back 20 feet from the rear lot line, abutting a non-open road allowance. These variants are granted as shown on the plan attached to the notice of decision and are subject to the following conditions. One, that an availability of an entrance permit be confirmed. And two, that a site plan agreement be entered into along with securities with retention of vegetation and planting in the front and side yards. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? And all those in favor? Okay, that is carried. Thank you. Thank you.
N A sixty four twenty two Davison, and that is Ms. Holland. Just one second, we'll mute it. Thank you, Chair. Uh, good morning, Chair Edwards and members of committee. Um, the next application to be heard is minor variance application A6422 in the name of Davidson. The subject lands are known municipally as 1020 Windsor Drive. Um, I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plan on page 205 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is as follows. The applicants propose to reconstruct a portion of an existing dwelling and construct an addition, including two covered porches, one of which is to be screened. A variance is requested to permit a dwelling addition to be set back 21 feet at the closest point from the high water mark, where a setback of 50 feet is required. A variance is also requested to permit a dwelling addition to be set back zero feet from Windsor Drive, where a setback of 25 feet is required from a lot line abutting a public street. A variance is also requested to permit a dwelling addition to be set back zero feet from the rear yard lot line where a setback of 25 feet is required. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 10 days in advance and four submissions have been received to date. Comments have been received from Nick Snyder, the Township Chief Building Official, and Tim Sopko, the Township's Public Work Technician. Letters of support were received from abutting neighbors to the Northwest, Tiffany Birch, and abutting neighbors to the Southwest, Diane and Dave Hennig. These comments were circulated to committee prior to today's meeting and can be read in full at the request of committee. A further comment was received by Tiffany Birch, the neighbor to the Northwest this morning, Monday, November 7th, 2022. She is supportive of the application, but has concerns with the township's communication timelines. Staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration and recommend approval in part to permit the proposed dwelling addition without the proposed rear covered porch with relief granted for a setback of 4.5 feet from the rear yard lot line. If committee is considering approval, staff recommend the following conditions. The site plan agreement be entered into along with securities to implement as required any standard protection policies of the District of Muskoka official plan, including vegetation retention, stormwater management and construction mitigation techniques. And that any holding tanks on the property that are no longer in use be decommissioned or removed, relocated to the satisfaction of the township's public works department if required. Staff have no further comments at this time and are happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you. Good morning. Okay. Oh, good morning. Uh, good morning, uh, Chair Edwards. It's Diane Davidson, uh, Post Office Box 19 in Bala, PLC 1AO. Um, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be speaking now. I was having trouble muting and I'm, everything was unmuted. So if I'm speaking yes. on the turn, let me know when you'd like to hear from me. <laughs> I can, I'd like to hear from you and you can put your video on if you like as well. Um, Okay, I'm having trouble for some reason with my uh, disabled. Um, I don't know why my screen's gone blank, but okay. as long as people as don't long worry as people about it. can hear me, um, yep, I think um, Mrs. Mulholland um, uh, has presented an, an accurate um, report. Um, we, our house was built in 1956, so we are just proposing uh, a, a somewhat modest uh, renovation just to accommodate a bit of a, a larger kitchen. Uh, at present, we have three small bedrooms. We are proposing to add a small guest bedroom. Um, and um, really have no problems with a site plan agreement. I'm not so sure it is really necessary. If you look at the report 
uh, you will see that our lot is uh, fairly well treed with, with a number of mature trees. Uh, we're not altering any of the shoreline or, or, or tree removal or anything down there, but um, if that's what committee wishes, uh, a site plan agreement, then we have no objection to that. Okay. And uh, now you were um, asking for a setback from the rear lot of zero feet or 4.5 feet. Oh, I would ask uh, Mrs. Mulholland to clarify that, please. Okay, just one second. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, so uh, at the moment, the site plan shows uh, there's a zero foot setback uh, to the rear yard light line for a uh, front uh, uh, covered porch um, at the um, entrance to their home. Um, and uh, Public Works has um, raised concerns for having um, such a, a negative or a no setback at all to a public maintained road. So the current setback is 4.5 feet and Public Works said they have no problem with maintaining the current setback. They just uh, are uh, not really in favor of coming closer to the rear yard and the public road. Sorry, would you like to respond to that, Ms. Davison? Uh, yes, please. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, yeah, uh, we have no objection to that. We, we have no intention of going any, any closer to the road. As I said, this is the original footprint from 1956. And um, back then, um, it was what I would consider a cottage road. Today, um, it's now a fully maintained uh, year-round um, municipal road and um, uh, as, as I say, we, we're not changing that footprint at all. We're not going any closer to the road. And, okay. and if I can just speak to the holding tank uh, comment, we purchased the house in 2000. So for the last nearly 23 years, those holding tanks have been uh, inactive. We are on uh, water and sewer. I believe they um, had they asked you to uh, decommission that tank. Yes. Okay, so it's been filled in. Uh, I, I, honestly, I can't answer that. Um, okay. We've never had any reason to uh, look into that. We just know that we've never used them. However. Um, uh, you know, we can we can certainly look into it. And if they're not, um, then we would comply with that. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, is there anyone else here wishing to speak in support of this application? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition to this application? Okay, are there questions from the members? No, I need the motion. Move by member Quinn, set by member Bosworth. Be it resolved that application A6422 Davison to remit a, a dwelling addition is hereby approved with the following variances being granted. One, to permit a dwelling addition to be set back 21 feet from the high water mark front lot line. And two, to permit a dwelling addition to be set back 4.5 feet from the rear lot line abutting a public street. This variance is shown Sorry, this variance is granted as shown on the plan attached to the notice of decision and subject to the following conditions. One, that the site plan agreement be entered into along with securities to implement as required any standard protection policies of the District of Muskoka official plan, including vegetation, retention, stormwater management, and construction mitigation techniques. And two, that any holding tanks on the property that are no longer in use be decomm decommissioned or removed, relocated to the satisfaction of the Township Public Works if required. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Any questions or comments? 
All those in favor. Oh, uh, Just, sorry. I, I listened to that quite carefully, Chair. Uh, did, we did get the removal of the um, of the porch in there. Well, it was set back. Uh, yeah, four, yeah it, 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 so that removes the porch. Yes. Okay, thanks. Okay. Yeah. Oh, this. Uh, come on, just one second. Thank you, Chair Edwards, and apologies to interject. I, I believe there's a slight change required to the condition regarding the, uh, the holding tanks. The condition, as it's noted in the resolution, um, indicates holding tanks on the property. I don't believe the, the holding tanks are located on the property. Again, it's a slight distinction. I believe they're located on the abutting uh, road allowance. Um, so again, I, I think um, we, we may just wanna amend that uh, condition uh, for added clarity going forward. So I'm going to read it out. Uh, I can, no, I can, I have to go on and off. And... Thanks. Thanks. So it now will state that any holding tanks for the property that are no longer in use be decommissioned or removed, relocated to the satisfaction of the Township Public Works Department if required. Okay, any questions or comments? All those in favor? That's Gary. Thank you, Chair Edwards and committee. Okay, and the next one is A, 6622 Bridge, and that is Ms. Crowder. Thank you, Chair Edwards. The next application to be heard is minor variance application A6622 in the name of Bridge. The subject lands are known municipally as 1110 Skeleton Lake Road 3, Unit 2. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plan on pages 226 and 227 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is as follows. To demolish an existing single-story dwelling and associated sun deck and two sheds, and to construct a new two-story dwelling with an associated sun deck and porch. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 12 days in advance of this meeting, and five submissions have been received to date. The following comments were received and have been circulated to committee prior to today's meeting. Comments have been received from Tim Sopko, the Township Public Works Technician, stating no objection to the application. Comments have been received from Nick Snyder, the Township's Chief Building Official, stating that spatial separation calculations and required fire separations will be reviewed at the time of building permit application. A letter of support was received from Gary Ego, a abutting property owner. A second letter of support was received from Helen and Darius Solstick, abutting property owners. And a third letter, letter of support was received from Eric Ellis B. Staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration and have recommended that the application be approved subject to the following. That the two existing sheds be removed as intended and that a site plan agreement be entered into along with securities for retention of vegetation and plantings to revegetate the shoreline buffer and side lot lines. Staff have no further comments at this time and are happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Crowder. And, uh... Is the applicant or applicant's agent here wish to speak on this? Uh, 
Hello. Hello. Okay. Uh, thank you, Chair Edwards and members of the committee. Uh, my name is Andrew Katz, uh, 234 Stevenson Road 2 East, Port Sydney, Ontario, and P0B1L0. Um, we are in an agreement to remove the sheds. Uh, we had the hope of uh, keeping the sheds until construction was finished for storage of construction materials. And we are in agreement to the site plan agreement for the shoreline buffer and side lot lines. Okay. Is anything else you'd like to say? Um, we'll just note that uh, the existing lot coverage as it is over the 8%, it's still less than what's existing. And the uh, side yard setbacks, they are uh, still encroaching, but they are less, well, sorry, they are more than what's existing for the setbacks. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else here wishing to speak in support of this? Anyone in opposition? Okay, are there questions from the members? Yes, Member Bosenberg. The staff had recommended discussion about rotating the building so that it's not... Uh, uh, looking over one of the neighbors. And uh, I was wondering if uh, that's was, they suggested that just have a discussion with the applicant. And, uh, you know, I'm not advocating for that, but I think we should just finish off that discussion because it, clearly if it lined straight out to the lake, it would not be looking over the neighbor's property uh, as it does at the moment. Yeah, the idea for that was to, uh, to not have closer setbacks than we currently do. It was just to keep it an orientation where we're further in from all our side yard property. And, and is there any, would you give that consideration and view that as an improvement? Um, I can speak with the homeowners and the, like they're present here too, so they can give their opinion on that. Okay, would you like to bring them in? Uh, the homeowners in the meeting. Okay. Hello. Yes. Oh, okay. you can hear me? Okay. Yes, we can. Yes. Good uh, Good morning to the members and to you, Chair. Um, I I'm fine if we if the building is turned, it's not a problem. We've left this up to Andrew Cass just to make sure that this is kind of just existing with what we have. But if um, if the committee and the chair wants us to move it more facing uh, facing the water, that's fine. Okay. Um, if we get the the um, the setbacks the way they are and they can move it, it's not going to affect it, is it not, uh, Bryce? It would bring it more into compliance. Yeah, just one second. Thank you, Chair Edwards. Uh, yeah, the orientation of the proposed or the existing and proposed dwellings in relation to the uh, the neighboring property was something we noticed while we were on site. And you can see it in the, the photos included in the staff report. Would note that uh, it's not an ideal situation, but in this case, um, we noted that the setbacks are improving and that both neighbors are in support. Um, as per our report, I would note that a change uh, such as a reorientation of the building itself, um, it may alter the setbacks that were circulated as part of the, the public notice. And if committee's looking to uh, alter that design, reorientate it, in other words, then um, it's likely that an adjournment would be warranted. And uh, as part of that process, staff would have the, the time to um, get into the details and determine whether any changed or reduced setbacks or additional relief would be required. Um, and it may be that the, the application is be required to be recirculated, but um, you know it's not ideal if that's the direction that committee's taking to, to try to attempt to do that on the fly. It's just a lot for, uh, for staff to consider. Thank you.
What, what are the wishes of the uh, committee? Mr. Member Quinn. Um, to adjourn or to to um, to talk about turning that building or check that out, were, were they planning on going into the ground and have contractors lined up to start immediately? Or is this something for next spring? Um, I don't want, I want to consider it more today if, if, if they're going ahead sooner than later. I would agree with that. Okay. Uh, and that, uh, Ms. Bridge? No, we, we, are, we are considering doing this in the spring. So I prefer to have, um, I prefer to have an answer today. Okay. So we are lining uh, up contractors and, every, and everybody now. Okay. Uh, yes, member Bosomer. Through you chair, I just, I, I just wanted to have this discussed as it seemed to me to be a good idea given that both uh, adjoining neighbors are in support and um, I, I don't want to cause any unnecessary delay uh, and uh, the planners have supported this as it is. So I will, I, I will vote in favor of this. Okay. Is that everyone else in agreement with that? <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Moved by Member Quinn, second by Member Grogan Green, be it resolved that application A 6622 Bridge to permit the construction of a dwelling with an associated sun deck and porch is hereby approved with the following variances being granted. One to permit to, to sorry, one to permit a dwelling to be set back three feet from the westerly interior side lot line. To permit a dwelling to be set back eight feet from the easterly interior side lot line. Three, to permit a sun deck to be 10 feet from the westerly interior side lot line. Four, to permit a sun deck to be set back 3.5 feet from the easterly interior side lot line. And five, to permit a coverage of 985 square feet or 10% within 200 feet of the high water mark. These variances are shown as are granted as shown on the plan attached to the notice of decision and are subject to the following conditions. One, that the two existing sheds be removed as intended and two, that the site plan agreement be entered into along with securities for retention of vegetation and plantings to revegetate the shoreline buffer and side lot line. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Any questions or comments? All those in favor. And that is carried. Okay, and the next one is uh, A7022, Graham, and that's Mr. Sawyer. Thank you, Edwards. Next application to be heard is minor variance application A70-22 in the name of Graham. And this subject property is located at 1003 Ann Street, unit number four. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plans and elevation drawings starting on page 253 of today's agenda package. Uh, the purpose and effect of the application is summarized as follows. The applicants pr propose to demolish an existing single story boathouse, a boat port and associated docks, and to construct a new boathouse and associated docks. Uh, the maximum permitted width for a single story boathouse is 16% of the lot frontage or 16.2 feet in this case. The existing boathouse and boat port have a cumulative width of 32 feet and the proposed boathouse has a width of 26 feet. Although this uh, redevelopment represents an overall improvement, the proposed width is greater uh, than permitted and a variance of 9.8 feet is therefore requested. In cases where a single story boathouse without roof that is capable of being used as a sun deck has, le has legally existed since prior to 2005, the minimum side yard setback is 30 feet instead of 45 feet. In this case, the applicant's agent has advised that the roof was used and uh, 
was capable of being used as a sun deck, but is no longer structurally sound and therefore is currently not used as a sun deck. Uh, in this case, the proposed boathouse is to be set back 13.6 feet from the easterly side lot line and a variance of 16.4 feet is requested from the 30 foot setback. Uh, the side yard setback from the westerly side lot line projection is 45 feet as the proposed boathouse is to be uh, 35.2 feet from the side lot line projection, a variance of 9.8 feet is requested. And uh, similarly, the minimum side yard setback for the proposed dock is 27 feet um, from the westerly side lot line. As the proposed dock is set back uh, from the westerly side lot line by 23.4 feet, a variance of 3.6 feet is requested. And notice that this public hearing was circulated 10 days in advance of today's meeting in accordance with the Planning Act. Um, please note that after the public notice was circulated, a further review of the application revealed that not all required variances have been described in the notice. Although all required variances are described in the staff report, and I've mentioned each of them here today, staff would recommend that a decision on the application be adjourned and that a revised public notice be circulated at no cost to the applicant and that a second public meeting be held at a future committee of adjustment meeting. Uh, to date, five comments have been received, all of which have been submitted to committee in advance of today's meeting. Um, actually, there's one more that's come in, uh, but I'll explain that uh, here. Um, the Townships Development Services and Public Works Departments have both advised that they do not have any concerns. A submission was received from uh, Gid Morrison from 1003 um, Ann Street. Um, I don't have the unit number, but it's a couple of, um, it's, there's one intervening property between Gid Morrison's and the subject property uh, towards the east. And uh, the letter is in support. And Mr. Morrison explains that he assisted with construction of the boat port in 1983 to uh, confirm that it has been uh, in that location for a long time. Uh, the next two submissions are related primarily um, to are, have to do with the sun deck use of the existing boathouse. And one of these submissions, uh, one of these was received an hour ago and has therefore not been provided yet to committee. So I'll, I'm gonna just read both of these. Uh, a submission was, so the first one is from Stephen Bloomberg at 1003 Ann Street, Unit 6, which is the abutting property to the east. And uh, it reads as follows. Um, Last night I received an application for a minor variance to my neighbor's dock and boathouse. I see that there is a public hearing scheduled for um, November 7th. While I haven't had a chance to thoroughly review the application in detail yet, I would like to it noted that the applicant's claim of a previous rooftop sun deck seems erroneous. I have not seen it used as a deck. It has no real railings, nor does it seem that the existing structure could support any weight. Please see attached picture for your reference of my family and their existing boathouse in the background from a few years ago. And I'm a seasonal resident and cannot, cannot take a current picture. I might have other objections as well, but I request that it go on the record as I will not be able to attend the meeting in person or online on November 7th. Um, and I request to be uh, copied on any future notices on this proposed variance. And uh, that is signed uh, Stephen Bloomberg. And then uh, the, the submission that was um, received this morning is, um, is again from Gid Morrison and uh, at unit eight, um, two properties to the east. And uh, in his second submission, he writes, um, I'm providing some additional input to the application for minor variance to the Graham dock and boathouse. <laughs> See the email chain below identifying that the boathouse was not used as a sun deck in the past, which is not accurate represent, not accurate representation. I have known the Grams since 2005. After they purchased the property, the boathouse was used regularly as a sun deck. In, in fact, I have been on the rooftop myself on a number of occasions. I do agree that in recent years, the rooftop was not used as, as it is no longer safe to be on the roof. Overall, I have no objections and am in favor of the minor variance as proposed, which is positive for the neighborhood. 
And that's signed Gib Morrison. Um, staff have prepared a detailed planning report for committee's consideration. Given that the boathouse reconstruction and enlargement is located within a bay that is identified as type one fish habitat, staff have recommended that a decision on the application be deferred uh, to provide the applicant with time to complete a scoped environmental impact study to confirm that the proposed development will not negatively impact the habitat. And in addition, as mentioned previously, staff have recommended that the public notice be recirculated with a list of all the required variances. And I have no further comments at this time, but I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Sawyer. And I see we have the agent and the owners here. Uh, who would like to speak first? Good morning, committee. Thank you for having us today. Um, so first, I think it's important to kind of discuss how this all unfolded. So when I first met the Graham family, uh, they indicated to me that they were sick of this boathouse that's starting to fall down and trying to upkeep it and whatever else. They're like, you know what? We put too much time, too much money into trying to upkeep it. It's time to just rebuild from scratch. So what's it take to rebuild exactly what's here? So looking around the property, there's a 22 foot wide boathouse that comes out 35 feet from shore. And then there's also an eight by 10 boat pour at the end of the dock that's currently at 55 feet from shore. I explained to them that, you know, as of right, you would be allowed to rebuild your boathouse as is, where is, because it's encroaching on the side yard setback. So that's pretty much the only place that uh, you can rebuild the boathouse. That's kind of the general reason for the minor variance is they didn't want to move the boathouse into the center of the uh, lot because they were worried about blocking the view from their cottage. Um, but also dredging had taken place back in 2008. So that's why I have a hard time with the uh, environmental impact study being needed. Uh, one, because this conversation has been going on since the beginning of the summer, uh, was not made aware to us, uh, nor is it uh, practical that we could find out that it was type one fish habitat um, until two weeks ago, just before planning committee. Um, the Graham family indicated that time was of the essence because um, they were hosting a wedding this coming summer. Um, so it's imperative for them that they have a you know, tidy waterfront with a nice boathouse and whatever else. So I explained to them, sure, building permit route gets you, you know, your boathouse exactly where it is and you can rebuild your eight by 10 boat port and you can actually drag that boat port back all the way to shore um, as like a secondary structure. Um, I had sent <clears throat> an email to Miss Babington this morning. Um, I hope you've all seen it. If not, I'm wondering if it could be shared just so we can kind of walk through uh, what the current as of right built form would be. Um, so I can outlay to you all uh, that this is a definitely net positive improvement. Um, I personally think, and we've, I've had lengthy discussions with the Graham family about the importance of keeping the scope sacred and, and what it is to all of its users. Uh, all the Graham family is looking to do is have you know, one boat slip and some adequate space for storage of kayaks, paddle boards, <clears throat> and the furniture in the winter time. Um, I think that's a fair request. So is that possible, Miss Babington? Can we put that up? Yes, I, I, if, if it's possible, we can put that up. He sent an email earlier this morning uh, I know, as of right development. And he wants that to be prepared. Do you so have it? I haven't seen it either. No, that was the planning. Unfortunately. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll interject here. Um, okay, just one second then. Okay. Thank you, Chair Edwards. Um, Mr. Soya, uh, did you receive the, the email that? Uh, uh, Mr. Donaldson is, is indicating that he sent, and if you have, would it be possible to uh, to share that a attachment? Sorry, I did send it to Ms. Babington, but I'm happy to forward it to Sam right now. I have not yet received it today. Um, yeah, so if, if you're able to forward that, I, I believe I should be able to receive it here any minute and uh, be able to share it. That's sent to you now. Sorry, Sam. I found it, I sent it to Alex. Okay. So let me just kind of run through the numbers. I, I 
just for the sake of time, I hope it, I, I think it's fairly straightforward. I think you'll all be able to keep up just fine. Um, so currently there's a 22 foot wide boathouse that's 35 feet from shore. Uh, that totals 704 square feet. Um, and then the eight by 10 boat port that's currently there that could be brought all the way back to shore, maintaining that 55 foot uh, projection from the lot line um, could be brought back, making it 60 feet long, which is a, an additional 600 square feet totaling, you know, between both boat houses and boat, between the boat house and boat port, we'd now be sitting at 1,304 square feet. Um, so yeah, if you could just zoom in on that bottom section, Sam, where the boat is, that would be great. Oh, Sam's got it on there now. Yeah. yeah. And so as I outlined, you know, time is of the essence for the Graham family. Unfortunately, we didn't know an environmental impact study was uh, necessary for this type of application because there's no way for us to know that it's type one fish habitat. Obviously, uh, that's held, those cards are held close to the chest so that fishermen can't just show up and start ripping fish out of the lake. Um, so we did not, we were not aware of this until two weeks ago. Um, and unfortunately, environmental impact studies, as you probably are aware, cannot be done until probably next summer, uh, which, you know, then holds back the Graham family from getting this uh, boathouse done within their time frame uh, as desired. So we may have to go to this route. Um, but otherwise, what we are looking to do, I'd just like to outline the improvements. <clears throat> we are going from a nine foot side yard setback to the east to 13 foot six. Um, the one time dock and boathouse extension is only taking place from the 15 foot side yard setback being brought out within the 50 foot setback from shore. Um, and then the reason for the minor variance on the extension of the dock to the west, uh, that small triangular piece, um, it, this is just the regular uh, application now, Sam. It's not, not the current one that's on the screen. Um, so the only reason for that is the projection because it's quite a skewed angle um, for pying into itself. Uh, so we're dropping from a 32 foot wide boathouse or cumulative width of boathouse and boat port to 26 feet wide by 50 feet from shore, which is a total of 1170 square feet. So we're 130 square feet less than our as of right proposal that would be kind of a, our alternative. Um, and we also have an improvement of four feet on the side yard setback. If that, if the minor variance did not go through, we would have, we would be forced to build the boathouse nine feet from the side yard as current. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions, I'm here to answer them. Uh, I would just like to bring uh, to light one of the uh, paragraphs from Sam's report. Uh, table two uh, on page 13, section B.4.2, waterfront objectives and character as it relates to the official plan um, to ensure that built form does not become concentrated or dominate, dominant uh, the waterfront to the detriment of natural form. So the importance here in my mind is that, you know, we're currently looking at a position where we have two structures on one singular dock. Uh, one is 10 feet wide by 60 feet long, and the other is 22 feet wide by 35 feet long. Uh, in my opinion, that is not something that probably any of us want to see in the township. Uh, the Graham family is on board as well, despite that, it, despite the fact that it does give them more square footage um, and a closer side yard setback, they would prefer to drop it to a 26 foot wide boathouse so that everything can all be incorporated into one building. All they're looking for is one single boat slip, um, and they're also looking for some indoor storage of their stand-up paddle boards, kayaks, and a place to store their furniture in the wintertime. So I hope I've answered everything preemptively. Um, it's quite hard to kind of get everything laid out front, but if you have any questions, please ask. Uh, I would also encourage you to, um, if you have any specific requests that you would like to see in our application and in our proposal, uh, please make those requests known to the grand family. They are quite willing and, and uh, able to Kind of negotiate and find some common ground of what you'd like to see uh, but we do see this as a beneficial thing for the township uh, but again time is of the essence so unfortunately we wouldn't be able to go through the process if site plan approval was required nor would we be able to go through if the environmental impact study was required reminding you that the mnr did allow a dredging permit back in 2008 uh, should be sufficient evidence that there is not going to be fish habitat directly under the dock that is already currently there Thank you. Okay, would the uh, Graham family like to say anything at this time? Um, 
just that we're we're open to your suggestions. We uh, we we made a promise to a young girl that we would have the boathouse done and complete for her wedding, and we uh, we would certainly not like to break that promise. So we are open to suggestions. Okay. Is there anyone else here wishing to speak in support of this application? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition to this application? I guess I have a uh, question. You were saying about the uh, the uh, uh, boat port that's at the end of the dock now, and yeah. you can bring it right back to shore. Yeah. And I, I guess I'd ask, ask Mr. Sawyer, is that right, or is it as built uh, and only as built? Thank you, Chair Edwards. Um, so the existing boat port and uh, then the existing boat house both contribute to um, the existing cumulative width of those structures. Uh, so that is the, the current uh, envelope of those shoreline structures. And um, if they're in terms of needing relief from, from the width, um, there is no relief that would be uh, requ required for that. Um, so they would be able to rebuild as of right, a uh, boat port that in accordance with our zoning bylaw that would um, stretch back to the shoreline. That is correct. Okay, I just wanted to make sure just so the committee knew. Okay, are there questions from the uh, committees or uh, any comments? Uh, well, we were asked that this was adjourned and that, and uh, what are uh, committee's uh, thoughts on that? Anyone? Yes, Member Quinn. If the proper information wasn't circulated and the neighbors haven't had a chance to comment, is that not... Um, by going ahead today and adjourning, is that not opening up a can of worms or, or problems for us to make a decision today? Mr. Mr. Sharp, just a second. Thank you, Chair Edwards, and thank you for your question, Member Quinn. Uh, you are correct. Um, at the end of the day, Ms. Bavington would need to sign off on a decision and she may struggle to do that, um, knowing uh, that, um, you know, all of, not all of the required variances were circulated as part of the public notice. Um, so our recommendation is to uh, adjourn the application and uh, recirculate. With respect to a recommendation for a scoped environmental impact study to address uh, fish habitat. Um, I would note that, you know, in my experience, um, there are opportunities to do those types of uh, studies on a year round basis. I've even seen um, consultants, you know, drill holes through the ice and, and utilize cameras in order to evaluate um, habitat conditions uh, below, below the ice. So I think, you know, there is a possibility to do that. Um, you know, of course, uh, scoped environmental impact study is only our recommendation. Um, but I would also note, as you are aware, um, there are uh, the federal uh, requirements under the Fisheries Act requiring applicants uh, to do their own due diligence with respect to the impacts on fish habitat. Um, so if committee were to disagree with our recommendation and not require a scoped environmental impact study, the reason I mention this is because those obligations would still prevail and technically uh, the applicants should be doing their own due diligence to ensure that uh, there won't be any impacts to, to fish habitat. Thank you. Okay. Uh, does that answer your uh, question, um, uh, Member Green? Okay. Uh, Member Green. Yeah, I, I believe that we should just support the planners' um, decisions to adjourn and, and also have a scope DIS 
I'm a bit concerned that one neighbor says one thing also about this sun deck and another neighbor says a different thing. And I think that, uh, you know, the, in, in, to respect the Bloom, Bloomberg, I think, letter, we should adjourn because that was what he thought was going to happen when he wrote that. So th that's my opinion. Okay. Member Bosenworth. Yes, I think we should adjourn as well for uh, both of the reasons stated. Um, and, and, and I would obviously recommend that we get this back as quickly as possible in front of the committee so that the uh, applicants can continue with their work. Um, but if you can do in, uh, environmental impact study, we won't get ice until January. Uh, so there's lots of time to get that done. Okay, Member Quinn. There might be already a, an impact study done from the dredging that is easy to access from 2008. Right, okay. Member Creaser, did you have anything you wanted to say? No, I support the adjournment. I do too, because I wouldn't want our secretary treasurer have to, to uh, forge something. I'm uh, uh, very, very cognizant of, of that. And that so unfortunately, I'm going to say we should adjourn this and that. It's unfortunate, but uh, it can be brought back as soon as possible. And uh, and that, Mr. Uh, Member Bosomer. Um, I, I might just add, uh, Chair, if we have any other concerns with this, because I wouldn't want to be slowing this down unnecessarily. If we are happy with the ap application, generally speaking, as it is, then I think we should express that now. Uh, so that we can help the applicant move as quickly as possible and, you know, not have the next meeting and find that, uh, of course, it won't be the same can be the adjustment, but uh, we could certainly give our guidance if any of us thought that there were things that we did not like in the current proposal. Okay, thank you. Um, is there anyone would, would like something changed in that? I don't have a problem with it. Mine is on actual uh, procedure and right. that, and... Uh, and that, and like I say, uh, the secretary cannot sign off on, on something like that. So we'll adjourn this. Thank you. I'm sorry. Uh, yes, Mr. Green. Um, so just, I just want to make sure I have clarity on. So we, you want the fish study then? We would have to do the fish study before we came back in December. And I, a question, and because I'm not that knowledgeable on these things, our neighbor, just to the left of us on the bay, pulled a permit a couple of years back. I'm assuming they would have done a fish study. Would we, how big do they encompass of an area when they do these fish studies? Would it cover our whole end of the bay or would it just be within a sort of 50? No, I think it would just be the property is, is my understanding. So okay. I think you could get one done fairly quickly, especially with the weather the way it is right now. And that Mr. Donaldson, I'm sorry. We, we have, have made a motion on, on this. And that you can bring it back hopefully next month if you can get everything lined up. Thank you. And the next one is A7122 Gooder Shaw. And that's Ms. Crowder. Thank you, Chair Edwards. The next application to be heard is minor variance application A7122 in the name of Goddard and Shaw. The subject lands are known municipally as 1045 Cherokee Crescent. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plan on page 273 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is as follows, to construct a single story boathouse with a rooftop sun deck on an existing dock. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 11 days in advance of this meeting and two submissions have been received to date. Comments have been received from Tim Sopko, the Township's Public Works Technician, and Nick Snyder, the Township's Chief Building Official, both stating that they have no objection to the application. Staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration and have no objection to the application. Staff have no further comments at this time and are happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Crowder. Is the applicant or applicant's agent here wishing to speak on this? Okay. 
Good morning, Chair Edwards and committee members. Uh, my name is Jessica Coker, 5 River House Lane, uh, Huntsville, Ontario, P1H2J3. Um, I'm representing the um, owners of this property. Um, I don't have anything further to add, but I am available um, and here to answer any questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Is there anyone else wishing to speak in support? Opposition? Okay, questions from the members. Okay, move by member Rogan Green, second by member Treaser, be it resolved that application A7122 Gooder and Shaw to remit the construction of a single story boathouse with a rooftop sun deck is hereby approved with the following variance being granted. One, to permit a single story boathouse with a rooftop sun deck to be 38 feet from the northerly side lot line projection. This variance is granted as shown on the plan attached to the notice of decision. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? That is carried. Okay, and the next one is a 7622, and that's a Lee Crowder. Busy day. <laughs> Thank you, Chair Edwards. The next application to be heard is minor variance application A7622 in the name of Kinsari. The subject lands are known municipally as 1110 Bruce Lake Drive, Unit 4. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plan on page 302 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of this application is as follows to construct a second story addition to an existing dwelling. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 11 days in advance of this meeting and three submissions have been received to date. Comments have been received from Tim Sopko, the Township's Public Works Technician, and Nick Snyder, the Township's Chief Building Official, both stating that they have no objection to the application. A letter of support was received this morning from Carol and Mylan Kovic, area property owners, stating that they have no objection to the application. This comment was not circulated to committee due to the time it was submitted. Staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration and have recommended that the application be approved subject to the following conditions. That a satisfactory site plan agreement be entered into along with securities to implement as necessary the enhanced protection policies of the Muskoka official plan, including retention and revegetation of the shoreline buffer, and that one of the two sleeping cabins be removed or the buildings brought into compliance with zoning requirements. Staff have no further comments at this time and are happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Crowder. Is the applicant applicant's agent here wishing to speak on this? Okay, bring them in, please. Good morning, Mr. Edwards and committee. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, sorry, I'm not sure why my camera's not working here. Um, my name is Lindsay Kachuk of Bailey Designs, located at 172 Dunlop Street West in Barrie, Ontario. I'm acting as agent for Mr. and Mrs. Kinsari. Our client is looking to construct a second story for their existing cottage. We are seeing from the side yard setback requirement of 15 feet. The existing cottage is 11.665 feet from the southwesterly lot line. The variance requested is for 3.335 feet. It did send in a slideshow. I don't know if that's okay. being shown. We'll go to the next slide. Here's the location of the property on Bruce Lake. The next slide shows that the property is zoned WR5 and is, surround, and is surrounded by other properties of the same zoning. Next slide. 
There's a large vegetation buffer on both sides of the cottage that provide privacy for the neighboring properties and maintain their enjoyment. By adding the sec second story addition, we will mitigate any site alterations or the need for removal of trees. Next slide, please. For the site plan, um, you can see that the setback in question is circled in red. Also on the site plan, you can see the proposed filter bed to accommodate the additional floor space. The filter bed meets all setback requirements. Next slide, please. On the right is the existing non-conforming cottage that has been there for 70 plus years. On the left, there are two elevations to show the proposed addition of the second story. The second floor will be built into the roof frame, keeping it visually modest. The addition of the second floor is to accommodate the three bedrooms on the main floor to allow for more room for this growing family. We believe this is a reasonable application and, minor, and is minor in nature. Thank you for your time and I'm here if you have any questions. Great, thank you very much. Is there anyone else wishing to speak in support? Anybody in opposition? No. Questions from the members? Yes, Member Quinn. Yeah, I'm reading through the staff notes and they talk about one, one of the sleeping cabins being removed. And I just wondered if that could be more specific to the one closest to the lake because it's at, it's at 31 feet back and four feet from a sideline where the other existing bunkie is 21 feet in and 58 feet back. So that would be coming more in compliance with the bylaws. Any other uh, comments from anyone on that or anything else? Uh, yes, Member Bosworth. Excellent point with, uh, by Mr. Quinn, which I agree with. Okay, and Member Green, you had your hand up. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing as as Rob. Congratulations. Change that. Okay. Any other comments other than that? Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Moved by Member Crease or second by Member Quinn, be it resolved that application A7222 Kansari to permit the construction of a second story addition to an existing dwelling is hereby approved with the following variances being granted. One to bring a second story addition to be set back 11 feet from the southwesterly interior side lot line. This variance is granted as shown on a plan attached to the notice of decision and is subject to the following conditions. One, that a satisfactory site plan agreement be entered into along with securities to implement any necessary and 
in, sort of enhanced protection policies of the Muskoka official plan, including retention and revegetation of the shoreline buffer. And two, that the sleeping cabin nearest to, to Bruce Lake be removed or the buildings be brought into compliance with zoning regulations. And uh, this approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Yes, Kevin. And the next application is A7722, Forfar and Forrester. And that is Ms. Walker. Thank you, Chair Edwards. The next application to be heard is minor variance application A-77-22 in the name of Forfar and Forrester. The subject property is known municipally as 1125 Trafalgar Bay Road, Unit 2. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plan on page 323 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is summarized as follows. The applicants propose to construct a two-story garage with a sleeping cabin in the second story. Relief is requested from section 4.1.3.6 and 4.1.3.7 of bylaw 2014-14 as amended being the maximum coverage of buildings on a lot and the maximum coverage within 200 feet of the high water mark. The maximum permitted coverage is 8%. 8.6% lot coverage is proposed on the entire lot and 8.8% lot coverage is being proposed within 200 feet of the high water mark. The requested relief is 0.6% and 0.8% respectively. Relief is also requested from section 4.1.3 being the minimum interior side yard setback requirement of 15 feet. The proposed garage is to be set back 10 feet. The requested variance is five feet. Notice of this public hearing was circulated 12 days in advance of today's meeting in accordance with the Planning Act, and three comments have been received. Comments have been received by Tim Sopko, the Township's Public Works Technician. Uh, to, sorry, Nick Snyder, the Township's Chief Building Official. A letter of support has also been received by Dawson Curry, neighboring property owner to the north. These comments were each circulated to committee prior to today's meeting and can be read in full at the request of committee. After comments were circulated, a letter of support was received from Greg Gridwood, neighboring property owner to the south. The submission is as follows. My wife, Karen, and I have reviewed the plans and requested variances. We support the forfair site plan and hope the committee of adjustment will approve. Please don't hesitate to contact me if you need any more information. Staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration and have no objection. If committee is considering approval, staff have recommended the following condition. That a satisfactory site plan agreement be entered into along with securities for the revegetation of the shoreline buff and this other lease side plotline. Staff have no further comments, but I'm happy to assist with any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Walker. And I believe the agent is here, or the applicant. Okay. Go ahead, sir. Yes, hi. Adam Lenny, the permit guy, 35 Covered Bridge Trail in Bracebridge, P1L1Y1. Thank you for hearing us today on this application for a two-story garage. The neighbors to the north and the south have both submitted letters, as you just heard, in support of this application. With regards to the lot coverage relief, the homeowners had this in mind when designing the proposed structure and have kept it to 378 square feet footprint in order to keep the lot coverage to a minimum. As for the side yard setback relief of five feet we were requesting, if the structure was to comply with the setback, it would be built more on the existing driveway and therefore some very large mature trees would have to be removed in order to alter the driveway to get around to the cottage. It is our opinion that tree removal and site alteration is minimized with this location. With regards to the revegetation of the south side of the property shoreline buffer, there is significant bedrock present and even the existing trees are having a hard time with growth. The owners have tried to revegetate the front yard area with mixed outcomes over the years. The owners are in favor of re revegetation, but in areas where root systems will take. They also want to add 
plantings along the neighboring lot line to help with privacy and buffer to the neighbors to the south. I'm here if they have any other questions or comments. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else for support? Anyone in opposition? Okay. And a uh, question from the members. No? Yes, Member Grogan Green. Can't hear you. We can't hear you. It's very difficult, I think, to vegetate this buffer because it's so altered. You know, I've taken a look here, trying to figure out where you would put anything because these uh, piled up man-made sort of boulders uh, make it extremely difficult the whole way along the lot line. So the only thing I see is there's a couple of Muskoka chairs and, and a storage uh, bin. Maybe if that patio was lifted up, there might be an opportunity to fill because it's just very hard to, to figure out whatever was there. Um, but I do agree that something needs to be done. So that's, that's, what, that's my opinion. Okay, thank you very much. Anyone else? Okay, I'll read the resolution. Move by member Kogan Green, said by member Quinn, be it resolved that application A, 7722 Forfar Forrester, to permit the construction of a two-story garage with a sleeping cabin in the second story is hereby approved with the following variances being granted. One, to permit a lot coverage of 2,156 square feet or 8.6% over the area of the entire lot. Two, to permit a lot coverage of 2,156 square feet or 8.8% within 200 feet of the high water mark. And three, to permit a two-story garage with a sleeping cabin in the second story to be set back 10 feet from the southerly interior side lot line. These variants are granted as shown on the plan, shown on the plan attached to the notice of the decision and are subject to the following condition. One, that a satisfactory site plan agreement be entered into along with securities for revegetation of the shoreline buffer and the southerly side lot line. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? That's carried. Okay, and the next one is A7922. And that is the Lake Joe Property Limited, and that is Ms. Walker again. Thank you, Chair Edwards. The next application to be heard is Minor Variance Application A-79-22 in the name of Lake Joe Property LTV. The subject property is known municipally as 4558 Muskoka Road, 169 Unit 3. I would direct committee's attention to the submitted site plan on page 344 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is summarized as follows. The applicant is proposing to demolish a two-story dwelling, a boat port, a one-story boathouse, and other accessory structures. The applicant proposes to then construct a new two-story dwelling, a two-story boathouse, and a garage, and a sports pavilion. Relief is requested from section 4.1.2.6 and 4.1.3.7 of bylaw 2014-14 as amended, being the maximum permitted coverage of buildings within 200 feet of the high water mark. The maximum permitted coverage is 10%, 11% coverage is being proposed, the requested variance is 1%. Relief is also requested from section 4.1.7 and 4.1.7.9 being the maximum permitted length of 50 feet for a boathouse. The proposed uh, first story boathouse is 54 feet in length, the requested variance is 4 feet. Notice of this public hearing was circulated 11 days in advance of today's meeting in accordance with the Planning Act and two comments have been received. Comments have been received by Tim Sopko, the Township's Public Works Technician, and Nick Snyder, the Township's Chief Building Official. These comments are both circulated to committee prior to today's meeting and can be rented, read in full at the request of committee. Staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration and have no objection. If committee is considering recommending approval, staff have recommended the following condition. 
that a satisfactory site plan agreement be entered into along with securities for the revegetation of the shoreline buffer. Staff have no further comments at this time, but I'm happy to assist with any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Walker. And is the applicant or applicant's agent here wishing to speak on this? No? Anyone for, for approval? Anyone against? Okay. Uh, oh. Okay. Okay, are they coming in? Hello? Yes, hello. Hello, uh, my name is Mike Glancy. Uh, my address is uh, 257 Young Boulevard, Toronto, Ontario, um, M5, uh, M563J1. Um, and I'm uh, the next door uh, neighbor to that, uh, the property you're discussing. Um, there, um, we have concerns about the project and uh, we received the notice in the mail Friday, November the 4th, we haven't had sufficient time to discuss it with all the parties involved, uh, nor have we been in contact with the, um, with the uh, planner or the builder. Um, we'd request that it be um, adjourned or set back to a date that gives us time to consider the request. Okay. Okay, anything else you'd like to say? Uh -huh. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak in support of this? Or against? We don't know their name. They just have the name home listed. Okay. Yes, go ahead. Are they uh, coming in? They're in. I'm asking them to unmute. Okay. Can you unmute? Hello, are you there? If you could unmute, that would be great. Hello, are you there? Hello. Hello. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I was uh, just speaking. Was I muted? I'm waiting for someone else to come on. I was waiting for someone else to, to come on, I believe. Uh, uh, who is this uh, speaking now, Mr. Glancy? This is Mike Glancy speaking, yes. Sorry. Yeah, and you've already uh, stated what you wanted to say? Yes, thank you. Okay, there was someone else that we were trying to bring in. They're not there now? They're not unmuted. So. Okay, are there questions from the members? Yes, Mem member Bosworth first. Uh, I would just be interested in uh, what the kinds of concern Mr. Glancy has, because I'm not sure that this is going to get delayed, uh, adjourned. Um, and so I'd just be interested if he could express some of those concerns. Okay. Mr. Glancy, could you express your concerns? Well, we're waiting, and that uh, member Grogan Green, what would you like to say? I just, I thought, can you hear me? 
Yes, I can. Okay. I just um, was a little concerned about um, the way this deck cantilevers and goes beyond the dock, I think. It's, it's hard for me to understand some of the drawings. And um, so I was wondering about that. And then also, I, I really, that there's such a huge amount of dock in behind these boat slips. I don't really have a, a lot of sympathy for the fact of, uh, oh, sorry, we built the boat house, we bo built the docks bigger than they should be. I just, I don't have any sympathy for that. I think that uh, I, I personally don't go along with a variance of four feet for the, um, for the docks. Yes, Ms. Yes, Walker. Uh, just like okay. Sorry, just through you, Chair Edwards, I just wanted to clarify the four foot variances for the four, first story of the boathouse, not the docks. The docks are in compliance oh, okay. with oh, okay. So okay. can you clarify then why it can't go? So what is that? I don't understand. Explain uh, exactly if you can. Why can't that go backwards? Is that directed towards me? Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I don't know if I can comment on the reasoning behind needing the additional four feet, other than that's the design of the boathouse. Um, it's a fairly minimal area, but I would look to the owner or the agent to comment on that. Okay, and I see we have Mr. Glancy back in. Uh, what were your other uh, concerns, sir? Yeah, my, my primary concern is that we haven't had any contact from uh, the builder or the agent uh, explaining um, the site plan or the, um, or the um, um, adjustments they'd like to make to the, uh, to the exist, you know, the buildings. In addition to that, uh, the um, main house has not been torn down yet, but the, the other boathouse and uh, docks were torn down earlier this summer. And it's a very substantial dock, very close to our lot line. So we'd like to get some more information before we could feel confident in making a decision. Okay, thank you. Uh, Member Quinn. Yeah, I, I, from what I can see, it's um, the second story of the boat house. Um, I wonder if the agent or somebody, it looks like it's a, a small, small area that goes into the 54 feet. It looks like it, it's an area maybe, maybe four or six by 15, a very small portion um, that, and, and, and maybe Mr. Glancy could tell me whether he's to the, to I would call it the north or the south of this property. Uh, yes. You answer that, Mr. Glancy? Yes, uh, I'm, um, I'm to the south of the property. Okay, thank that? you. So, yeah. So this, this variance in the boathouse, you would have a hard time. It wouldn't be on your side or you, you would have to see through the boathouse to, to look at it. Is that correct in what I'm saying? Um, I guess so, that's right. Uh, it's It extends further out into the lake, is my understanding based on the, the plans, but that's something I'd like to know. The other speaker has unmuted. Now. Okay, and then uh, the other speaker has unmuted, so could you go ahead, please? Yes, my name is Sarah Glancy Kukan, and I'm a uh, part owner with the property next door with Mike Glancy. Um, okay. yeah, my, uh, my home address is 4164 Vermont Crescent, Burlington, Ontario, L7M4A9. And I just want to agree with what Mike uh, is saying. Um, and if you could see this property with your own eyes, you would see even before the boathouse is built, it's extremely close to our dock space, to, to our property line. Um, and we have, well, safe navigation is in question where how the boat slips are angled and directed to our property. And because we've only just received the letter on Friday, we really do request more time to properly look at the plan and understand it. There's a lot to take in. So that's again, why we're asking for more time on this. The letter seemed to have come in very late. So I would appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. And that, uh, who was next? Anybody else wanted to, to comment on that? Yes, 
Member Vargamos. Just, just a question through you, Chair. What are our legal requirements with respect to notification? Uh, I, I want to be as fair as we can to the Glancies, uh, but I don't want to also get us into a legal problem where proper notice was given uh, and um, and the applicant could, uh, you know, notice was sent out. It was a yeah. difficult time about unnecessarily delays. Um, I guess the second point I'd like to know is uh, it seems to me that uh, that the boat houses the boat houses side yard setback requirements be interesting to know how close the boathouse is to the glancy's place because of the uh the slips facing parallel to the shore instead of uh perpendicular but they haven't asked for a uh anything uh as far as that so it must meet the the uh the regulations but if i just to clarify if the glancy's boathouse is very close to their to, to the shoreline, then you know, bringing the boats in if they got a significant boathouse there as well, it could be a problem. And it's just the drawings don't show the position of the neighbor's boathouse. Okay, um, Member Quinn. Yeah, the on the, it has a funny lot line that goes out on an angle. Um, so I would say that uh, I mean, right now on the angle that is detriment to this property, uh, the corner there their boathouse itself is, is 49.5 feet. Um, so I would, I would have to think that the neighbor's boathouse is closer to a hundred feet away. Okay. That's fine. And um, just a second and we'll bring uh, the secretary treasurer in. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The legal requirement under the Planning Act is for the notice to be uh, mailed a minimum of 10 days prior to the hearing, and I can confirm that that was done. It was within the parameters. It's not only 11 days. 7th day. It's 10th day. 28th, it was mailed by the 28th um, at the very latest. Thank you very much. And it's hard to, to say what Canada Post does with, with mail, but it was uh, sent out legally. So that's the answer to, to, to that question. And um, uh, I think that is about it. Uh, any other questions? Okay. And uh, I'm going to read this, this motion. Move by Member Grogan Green, second by Member Creaser, be it resolved that application A7922, Lake Joe Property Limit, could remit the construction of a two story dwelling and a two story boathouse is hereby approved with the following variances being granted. One, to remit a lot coverage of 6,961 square feet or 11% within 200 feet, the high water mark. And two, to remit a boathouse to be 54 feet in length. These variances are granted as shown on the plan attached to the notice of the decision and are subject to the following condition. That a satisfactory site plan agreement be entered into along with securities for vegetation of the shoreline buffer. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Any questions or comments? All those in favor. Okay, anyone opposed? Okay, that is still carried. The next application is A8222, and that is Ms. Mahone. Just one second. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you, Chair Edwards. Uh, the next application to be heard is minor variance application A8222 in the name of Develis and McKenzie. The subject lands are known municipally as 1733 Walkers Point Road. 
I would direct committee's attention to the submitted consent sketch, or excuse me, the submitted site plan on page 375 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of the application is summarized as follows. The applicants propose to demolish a single story boathouse with a rooftop sun deck and an associated dock. The applicants also propose to construct a single story dwelling with a covered porch and a waterproof sun deck area with storage underneath, a sleeping cabin and a single story boathouse with a rooftop, rooftop sun deck and associated dock. A variance is requested to permit the lot coverage within 200 feet of the high watermark be 4,182.4 square feet or 11%, where 3,803 square feet or 10% is required. A variance is also requested to permit the maximum cumulative boat, boathouse width to be 32 feet, where 24.6 feet is required. A variance is also requested to permit the minimum side yard setback for a boathouse with a roof capable of being used as a sun deck to be 11 feet, where 30 feet is required. Notice of this public hearing under the Planning Act was circulated 10 days in advance, and two submissions have been received to date. Comments have been received from Nick Snyder, the Township Chief Building Official, and Tim Sopko, the Township's Public Works Technician. These comments were circulated to committee prior to today's meeting and can be read in full at the request of committee. A submission from the applicants was received yesterday, Sunday, November 6, 2022, as the applicants are not able to attend today's hearing. The points in their letter can be summarized as follows. Their intent is to maintain the integrity of Muskoka by pushing the cottage and bunkie further from the lake to not crowd the shoreline or impact their neighbor's line of sight. Their intent with narrowing the dock is to expose more shoreline and further minimize the impact to neighbors. They have met with neighbors and incorporated their ideas and suggestions in their proposal. They have strived to create plans that are both considerate to neighbors and in keeping with the Muskoka aesthetic. Staff have prepared a detailed report for committee's consideration and have no objection. If committee is considering approval, uh, staff, excuse me, if committee is considering approval, staff recommend the following condition. That a satisfactory site plan agreement be entered into along with securities for vegetation retention and revegetation of the shoreline buffer. Staff have no further comments at this time and are happy to answer any questions from committee. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Mulholland. Is the applicant or applicant's agent here wishing to speak on this? Okay, bring them in, please. Am I? No, I don't think so. Okay, oh, never mind. Nope. Good morning. Okay, go ahead. Morning, Chair uh, Edwards and committee. Um, I, my name is Ian McLaren, uh, 247 Sterling Road, Toronto. I am the architect and uh, agent for the client. Uh, you've heard from uh, the submission from the client who couldn't be here. The, the meeting changed. Uh, our spot on the agenda moved up a couple of times, so they didn't expect the, the meeting to be this month, and they would have liked to be here. Um, secondly, there was... Um, Rachel, did you get an email from the neighbor? Um, I believe they emailed it on Friday. Um, I just received. <sighs> Sorry. Could I could I read that one? Apologies. Thank you. Through your chair. Um, I uh, just I only received an email yesterday uh, from the applicants, and I did um, read out that submission in my uh, introduction. So, so you did not receive the email from the neighbor. Yeah. Could I uh, may I read that out uh, to the committee? I believe it was read. Is it? I didn't receive it. Okay. Email. Yes, you can read it out. Thank you. So this is from uh, the email is Joe Moher, which is uh, Joe and Mary Moher. Uh, hello, Rachel. I'm writing on behalf of Julia DeVellos and Daryl McKenzie concerning their minor variance at 1733 Walkers Point Road. We are their neighbors to the left when facing the lake. We've cottaged at this location, 1711 Walkers Point Road, since the early 80s and enjoyed Daryl and Julia as neighbors for the past eight years. 
During the past year, Julia and Daryl have been planning and sharing with us what they envision as their dream cottage and boathouse. We are very aware of what they have decided to do, often to the finest detail <laughs> and the source of much uh, animated discussion. Uh, the request for minor variance is of no concern, uh, a small detail that enhances their project. In the early 2000s, I served on the board of Muskoka Lakes Association and was the president for the years 2005 to 2007, which provided me the opportunity to meet a large and dedicated people at the township office and throughout the community. I was impressed by the work and effort that so many gave to preserving the natural beauty of the Muskoka landscape and the quality of water. By this experience, I can vouch for Daryl and Julia as being responsible lake dwellers and people who have the best interest of Muskoka in mind. Thank you for considering my thoughts and your work on our behalf. Wishing you well, Joe and Mary Moher. Just wanted to make sure that was uh, clear. The neighbors are uh, quite happy with the proposal. Um, I would just uh, add in summary that by locating the cottage and uh, Bunky much further from the lake than the existing uh, dwellings, and by keeping the, the boathouse within the existing footprint location, and by reducing the existing cumulative dock width, the owners have created the conditions uh, for reducing the visual impact uh, of the new buildings and for rehabilitating uh, that portion of the shoreline where existing docks uh, will be removed into addition, in addition to rehabilitating the, the rest to the uh, requirements of the township. The clients are happy to enter into a site plan agreement. I'm happy to answer any other questions. Can't hear. Okay. Uh, hi. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. McLaren, this is uh, the Secretary Treasurer. Can you please forward that um, email to us so that sure. we can formally receive it? Otherwise, yeah. we can't acknowledge it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Quinn, you had a question. Yeah, um, it, it talks about uh, part of the variances on page 214C, the minimum side yard setback for a boathouse with a rooftop sun deck. Um, I thought a boathouse had to be at 30 feet and where there was living space or sun deck, I thought that was a 45 foot setback. I could be, I could be wrong. I just like to clarify that. Right there, yeah. Yes, go ahead. Oh, just a minute. Thank you, Chair Edwards. In this particular situation, there is a existing single story boathouse with a rooftop sun deck uh, that's considered to be legal non-complying. In other words, it, it is situated within the uh, required 45 foot side yard setback. So the zoning bylaw quote unquote grandfathers this structure to the existing setback or a minimum of 30 feet, whichever is greater for redevelopment. So in this case, um, the setback is a 30 foot minimum versus a 45 foot minimum. If there was no um, you know, existing legal non-complying boathouse with a rooftop sun deck today, and one was proposed, it would be a minimum of 45 feet. So hopefully that um, helps add some clarity. It's, it's somewhat technical and not easy to, uh, to wrap your head around. Thank you. That's answered my question. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, Member Bosworth. Staff has suggested we should be uh, considering taking all, uh, reducing the overall dock size. Uh, the proposed dock is quite a bit longer than the existing dock. Its its width is over. Um, but I want a clarification from the planner. Um, if as a right, they have the, uh, they can rebuild the dock as is, and they also, do they have the right to build it longer than as is if it's over, if it's not compliant with the, with the width? Just a minute. Through you, through you, Chair Edwards, again, uh, thank you for your question, Member Bosomworth. Again, a, a somewhat technical section of the zoning bylaw, 
But in this particular instance, the existing dock exceeds the maximum permitted width based on a straight line frontage measurement of the, uh, of the property. So the bylaw would permit an addition in length within the existing width envelope provided the width of the addition itself does not exceed the maximum permitted width and provided the addition complies with dock length and required side yard setbacks. So, um, you know, in our report and in our review of the application, we had noted numerous improvements that are being made as part of this application, albeit some variances are uh, being requested, as we know, um, but we didn't feel a need to recommend a reduction in the size of the dock owing to those improvements combined with uh, the rights that otherwise exist. So, um, you know, the applicant is utilizing the provision for an addition in, in dock length, um, compliant with all of those requirements that I had just, um, just mentioned. Uh, so hopefully that provides some, some clarity. Certainly if, if committee disagrees with staff and feels that, uh, you know, the dock addition that you see on the site plan is going to dominate over natural form, consideration could be given to a reduction in the size of the dock be it in terms of length, width, or both. Thank you. Yes, so the Metro member of Osnabrück. Sorry, Mr. Sharp. So I think what you're saying is if we hold them, hold the applicant to reduce the dock size, he could make the dock longer and still get a square footage. Is that correct? Thank you. I think as of right, the applicant could actually uh, construct a larger addition to the dock as of right. Um, so the, the width of the addition that they're proposing is, is less than they'd be permitted as of right. You know, they're making uh, a number of improvements in other areas, for example, they're reducing the overall width of the dock as it exists today. So I think in consideration of all of those factors, we didn't feel a need to, uh, um, to recommend that the dock size be reduced. Thank you. That answers my question. Thank you. Is there any other questions or comments? Move by member Creaser. Second by member Quinn. Be it resolved that application A 8222 it to permit the construction of a single story dwelling with a covered porch and a waterproof sun deck with storage underneath, a sleeping cabin, a single story boathouse with a rooftop sun deck is hereby approved with the following variance being granted. One, to permit a lot coverage of 4,000. 183 square feet or 11% within 200 feet of the high water mark. Two, to permit a single story boathouse to be 32 feet in width. And three, to permit a side yard setback for a single story boathouse with a roof capable of being used as a sun deck to be 11 feet from the northwesterly side lot line projection. These variances are granted as shown on a plan attached to the north of this decision and are subject to the following condition. One, that a satisfactory site plan agreement be entered into along with securities for vegetation retention and revegetation of the shoreline buffer. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of approval. Uh, decision. All those in favor? That's carried. Thank you, Jimmy. And Babington, I'll send that letter. Okay, thank you. And the next one is A9022 McGrath, and that is Mr. Sawyer. Thank you, Chair Edwards. The next application to be heard is minor variance application A9022 in the name of McGrath. The subject property is located um, at 1058 Whitings Road, unit number 50. Eight, I would direct committee's attention to the submitted sketches starting on page 400 of the agenda package. The purpose and effect of this application is summarized as follows. The applicants have constructed a dock, which is intended to function as a foundation for a boathouse. 
The dock exceeds the maximum permitted length for a dock and two variances are therefore, are therefore have been requested. In the waterfront residential WR1 zone, the maximum permitted length of a dock is 66 feet. In this case, the constructed dock has a length of 69.9 feet and a variance of 3.9 feet. It's therefore requested. The maximum permitted length for the first story of a boathouse is 50 feet. In this case, as the dock is designed to carry a boathouse, uh, the proposed boathouse also extends a greater distance, which in this case is 53.9 feet. Therefore, a variance of 3.9 feet is also requested for the boathouse. Uh, notice of this public hearing was circulated 10 days in advance of today's meeting in accordance with the Planning Act and six comments have been received to date, all of which have been provided to committee in advance of today's meeting. Uh, the Township's Development Services and Public Works Departments have both advised that they do not have any concerns and letters of support were received from owners of all three abutting properties. Uh, these were received from Ken Ellis and Heather Talk from uh, 1058 Whitings Road, Unit 56, uh, also from Gordon Baker at Unit 59, and uh, William O'Malley at uh, Unit number 60. Uh, a letter was also received from Kelly and Steve Ledger, proprietors of Ledger Steel Systems Incorporated, uh, which is the company that constructed the dock. The letter explains that the dock was constructed at a greater length than permitted due to an inadvertent measurement error at no fault of the owners. Um, staff have prepared a detailed planning report for committee's consideration and have recommended approval. And I have no comments at this time, but would be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is the owner or uh, agent wishing to speak on this? And I see they're both here. We'll start with uh, Ms. Ledger. Thank you and uh, good afternoon. You almost made it, <laughs> Chair <Yeah. laughs> This one over. Um, my name is Terry Ledger, 167 Medora Street, Fort Carling, P0B1J0. I'm the agent for the applicant. Um, so as Mr. Soya uh, has said, this was a, a measurement error uh, off the uh, pin so that it, the dock was pinned uh, by a surveyor before uh, construction started. Uh, and the wall of the boathouse was uh, marked in the wrong spot is what happened. And so the entire dock was constructed from that point and uh, it's three foot 11 inches uh, too far out at the greatest point. It, it varies along the shore, but um, so the whole thing was shifted. So the extra dock is actually at shore. The boathouse isn't bigger, it's exactly the same size. The upper level of the boathouse still complies. Um, the reason that we're here for variance and not chopping off the dock is that uh, because of how this dock uh, was constructed the, with the slips parallel to shore, uh, the structure actually runs the other way. So you can't cut it back. And there's, we checked, we went to check to see what we could do, but the, uh, uh, there's a main roll pile right at the, at the edge. So that's 40 feet of water uh, into bedrock. So it's a big deal. So we thought uh, variants would be, uh, I guess the most sustainable option in this case, uh, obviously it would be great cost to the dock builder um, and certainly uh, not to Ms. McGrath, but this is where we are. Um, but given the large size of the uh, water frontage, they have a straight line frontage of 430 feet, actual frontage of 560 feet. The boathouse meets all the other requirements and setbacks from the neighbors. Uh, it's, it's actually tucked into a little bay if you look at the site plan. Um, so we thought that the impact would be minor and uh, happy that uh, planning agrees with us. And uh, so we, we appreciate your consideration. And I believe uh, Mr. McGrath would like to comment as well. And I'm here for any questions. I thank you very much. Mr. McGrath. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think Terry summarized everything. It's unfortunate. Um, we felt like we did everything correctly. We hired surveyors um, and uh, it's just an unintentional mistake um, that uh, Steve and team made. And um, it's a pretty big deal to go change it. So we, we do, um, we are fortunate that we have a very private lot. We have um, 
I personally talked to all my neighbors involved here. And as you know, they've, they've given me letters of support because it really doesn't have a material impact um, at all on, on anyone's uh, line of sight or, or otherwise. So we appreciate your, your consideration here. And um, uh, yeah, that's about it. Great, thank you very much. Is there anyone else here wish to speak in support? Anyone in opposition? Okay. Are uh, there questions from the members? Yes, Member Grogan Green. I just want to apologize. When I talked about the earlier application and the, uh, I was actually getting it mixed up. Uh, I was thinking about this application, but I think that um, uh, Terry Ledger's done a good job in sort of explaining it. And um, I understand there's neighbor support. So I'm, um, I'm, I'm quite all right with us. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? If not, I'll read the resolution. Move by Member Bosworth, set by Member Grogan Green, be it resolved that application A9022 McGrath to recognize an as built dock and to permit the construction of a two story boathouse is hereby approved with the following variances being granted. One, to remit a dock to be 69.9 feet in length, and two, to remit a boathouse to be 53.9 feet in length. These variances are granted as shown on the plan attached to the notice of decision. This approval shall remain in effect for three years from the date of decision. Any questions or comments? All those in favor. So that is granted. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, thank you all for serving for the last four years. Maybe we'll see you in the next four years. Thank you. And there's no other uh, new information, no uh, business, no business in that. I would just like to thank everyone for serving for the last four years. It's been a pleasure working with you all. And uh, thank you very much And that. And uh, I'll read the last resolution. To move by member Quinn, second by member Grogan Green, be it resolved that the meeting adjourned at 12 14 p.m. All those in favor. And that's Gary. Just wanted to say thank you to everyone as well for your dedication and service to the community. It's been a real pleasure working with you, and we hope to. Uh, I encourage you to apply and hopefully we can work together in the future as well. I know member Bosworth, congratulations on your thank you. Election and uh, we'll certainly be working with you and uh, thank you again. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. Well, as I said before, it's been a great training ground and uh, I certainly enjoyed, enjoyed every meeting and uh, Sharon and Joe and Lisa, you, you've been a great bunch to work with. Yeah, I'd like to say something too. I, I, I've so appreciated getting to learn the process and I've really appreciated the, the planners' uh, hard work and effort and opinions and judgments. I've really relied on them and I'm grateful also to our chair, Alan Edwards, yeah. who I think is the kindest, gentlest chair <laughs> and most gracious person. And I have truly enjoyed... Um, just listening to uh, Alan Edwards take charge of meetings and, and you really do it in such a nice way. It, it's really yeah. been a pleasure. Well, that's good. Thank Even you. if people don't get what they want, they should be treated with respect. Yeah. And I, I just say to Mr. Sharp that they give Alex too much uh, power there because she can mute me at any time that she wants. And just don't let that happen and that she give that to my wife. <laughs> <laughs> But thanks, Alex, for a great job. Yeah. Certainly the uh, Bryce and, and, and David and his staff are, you know, just top notch and great to yeah. work. Their reports yeah. are always really good reading. It's always been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Yeah. Have a good day. Thank you. All the best. Bye now.